What's up, y'all? We are waiting for Mr. Homer. I started a little bit early. Um, so I got some French music playing in the background. Uh, probably get copyrighted, but this is some Jamie Badgeron. He's a local guy from uh, South Louisiana, just down the road. He's got some some good music going and uh, getting me in the mood for a few sudsy suds tonight. So, hello, everyone. Wow, six people, five people. Oh, Jeff, what's up, brother? The music's too loud or you don't like it. I'll go ahead and turn it off. Like I said, I'm just, I started a little bit early trying to get everything set up for Mr. Homer to come in. Uh, probably gonna talk some smack back and forth about Shed Wars. Uh, Thomas, how you doing, brother? It's been a while. Um, we're probably gonna talk about some Shed War stuff going on in the smack back and forth. And then, uh, he, he wanted to talk about the okra. In one of my previous live streams I was with him on, we spoke with, uh, we spoke about using bleach to be able to uh let, let me turn this down <clears throat> we spoke about using bleach to help you know, you soak your um your okra seeds in it to help speed up the process so that's that's one thing he's, he's been getting a lot of comments from people saying it couldn't work sunday backyard farmer what's up brother seen you had a lot of work going on over there True. Another one from Atlanta. <laughs> I didn't realize that's where you were from. Uh, tomorrow, or not tomorrow, uh, Saturday, um, Broke Farmer, we're going to do a live talking about um, pruning different types of tomato plants and pruning the tomato plants. He's seen my last video um, from the greenhouse, and I was talking about what to prune and, and trying to give everyone a better idea of prune, pruning the tomatoes. And he had some questions. You know, We talked about it a little bit, but... Um, uh, figured it'd be a good thing to do, talk about it on a live stream. You know, that way I can answer questions. And if anyone would, would have any other you know, questions about it or anything like that, we'd be able to go back and look at it and talk about it. So that's part of what we got going on. Uh, the long, long hitch at work. Um, it's fun to get back on this YouTube. Killing some time. How's everybody's weather going on? We 49 degrees this morning. Uh, like I said, we're going to be talking about the okra and stuff with Mr. Homer, but if anybody else would like to come up and join, y'all are more than welcome to, I will share the link. And, uh, I mean, if you have some questions about the tomatoes, I can help you with, I'd, I'd love to help you with it. Um, you know, we, we're going to be, like I said, Saturday night, it's going to be Saturday at five, 5 PM, uh, central 6 PM Eastern. That we'll be we'll be going live and talking about that. Uh, Jeff, have you figured out what your secret seeds are yet? <laughs> oh, very unprofessional. Kind of unwinding right now, so I'm going to be a little jittery and everything. We've had the the government doing inspections on our facility for the last 14 days. Great dude, great people. Inspections going great. But uh, just the release of tension, not, not being out here, not being around it or having to deal with it right now is just unwinding. It's amazing. Hey, Mackenzie, how you doing? Thanks for stopping by, everyone. Oh, uh, so uh, Mr. Homer should be in, you know, in the next five to seven minutes. Um, I did go outside and I was trying to figure out how to post it on here. I wanted to show it. I have um, one tomato plant in the greenhouse right now that has 14 tomatoes on it. 
pumped up. Uh, one cluster, it's all big beef tomatoes in that greenhouse. And one cluster of it has um, 14 tomatoes. And six of them are about the size, little, almost the size of a baseball, hardball. Uh, really excited. Got a lot of pruning to go in there and do. Um, my wife was busy. <clears throat> Don't, she, had, she basically had enough time to fill the tanks, which is what's great about the hydroponics. You know, as long as you're filling the tanks, things will keep going. Hey, Alaska Rural Homestead, how you doing? That's fine, Mackenzie. Thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Um, peppers, I killed all my peppers. Jeff and uh, Mr. CB at CB's Greenhouse had sent me a bunch of different pepper seeds, and uh, I killed them all. Jules, what's up, brother? It's been a while, man. I've been busy at work. I tried to catch a little bit of y'all... Uh, your live stream Friday, but the internet just wasn't up to allowing it, man. Uh, y'all got a lot going on over there. If y'all don't know, check out Jules, but well, everyone in here, check out everybody. It's a, some great guys, great people. Sorry, McKenzie. Um, some great channels. Jules has a, a, another gardening community he's setting up. It looks really um, like, like it's going to be a great establishment for meeting local gardeners and, and finding people in your area if it works out. <clears throat> it's not just people from YouTube. Um, really, really. I, I will be getting involved with it as soon as things slow down a little bit on this end. Well, the, uh, Mackenzie, I'm, I'm way too late in the game over here on this end to start Peppers. Um, we will be trying some for one of the gladiator challenges from Shed Wars. Uh, I think it's number four where you go to the store and you buy something and you start it from seed. Um, we will be doing that this week, probably Monday. I'll, I'll get that done. And uh, i got a couple other things I need to take care of. Yeah, it's it, the growing community is amazing. It really is. I was uh, speaking with, with, you know, one of the, my local friends about it and, um, in fact, uh, uh, I made a new friend while I was at work and, um, you know, he's, he was telling me, man, you know, you, you, you help share a lot of your knowledge. And I said, well, you know, you can't take every, uh, you know, look into it more than what I tell you, because it's, you know, I, I might not be telling you, right. This is what I do. This is what I learned. I've learned from, you know, different people in, you know, between forums and everything else. But everybody always says the same thing. Share what you know. Share what you learn. Don't don't be greedy with it. You know, a lot of people are going to want to grow vegetable gardens for whatever reasons they have. Uh, it's starting to get big. And it's you keep people more involved if they know more about what they're doing. If, if they have success, they'll they'll stay involved with it. And um, everybody that's ever offered me advice or anything like that with the gardening community, is you know it's always the same thing you know just try to share what you know don't don't be greedy with it it really helps keep uh keeps people involved with it and keeps the community going you know, the more people you have involved the more you can learn <clears throat> uh, jules i'll be doing an update on the the greenhouse probably tomorrow morning but it's i was i'm not sure if you were in here but it's it's really taken off the second greenhouse, all the cuttings I put in it have uh, ha have established themselves, and they're they're looking good. So I'm really excited about the possible production and production of the both of the greenhouses I'll get out of it this year. Gardening all done wrong. How you doing? Happy forms. How you doing, Danny? Um, great. Yeah, yeah hydro lettuce. We. I've been going back and forth about you know, putting some in some cracky. Um, Bill and Val, how's it going, y'all? Um, uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the uh, the lettuce. I've been going back and forth on the lettuce, trying to decide if I want to put some. My wife and my oldest daughter are preparing for the the wedding in December. So they're they're both on the workout warrior routines and eating and all that. So I think we're going to start growing some lettuce this week also, but it's going to be in the house. 
uh, Jules, the peppers we had in the house, and we ended up bringing in a bunch of uh, aphids with some of the dragon fruit cuttings that we brought in, and we just couldn't get rid of them, and they they obliterated the the pepper plants. Um, so it was you know some some issues with that, and uh, you know trying to get the basics of watering them correctly. Some days we were watering too much, um, you know. Sometimes we'd forget about them and wouldn't water them for a week or so. So it just um, it, it's a cumulative effect of everything that we had going on. Lions Crest, what's up, brother? Glad to see y'all here. Um, we we are waiting for Mister Homer to come in, and uh, we're going to be talking about the okra, um, starting okra seeds and different things like that. I knew what you meant, Danny. No worries. I'm a twin, so I got called everything but Danny my whole life. So that that doesn't offend me at all. You know, you thank you. Um, drop some overseas. Thanks for the reminder. Um, as far as where I'm at, and uh, we'll talk about it some more when Mr. Homer gets back, but um, happy farms, Miss Danny. Um, we normally wait about another three to four weeks. We try to wait until the ground temperature over here is um, good and warm um, be before we put them out. Most of the time, um, the, the old man that taught me to do the okra, he would always plant out his beans first. And then when it was time to pick up the beans, he would, uh, he pull out the beans and then he would plant out his okra. And he, he always had a great crop. He had people coming from miles around. And his thing was, if you plant early, you're going to end up with the same amount of okra. You're just going to have less production off of your other plants. Um, the ground temperatures and, and, you know, other variables with planting them early, you'll get some nice, pretty big plants, but they won't, um, they won't start producing until, you know, the ground temperature stable somewhere between 68 and 70 degrees for, you know, a period of time. Um, <laughs> Mr. Robert, how you doing, brother? Uh, uh well, I can repeat them on YouTube because the, um, the the names I was called, mostly by my um, parents and, and people, I could repeat them because it was all in French and YouTube doesn't pick them up as bad words. So, yeah, I could, I could repeat them. Nobody else would understand them, but it would be fun. The okra white taste. The... Uh, Bill and Val, the okra really, if you fry it, uh, the okra seems to take on the flavor of whatever you're cooking. It's more of a side dish that we use it over here. If you fry it, it's battered and seasoned. Um, um, if you smother it down, we smother it down. It's a good side dish with rice and gravy, you know, as, as opposed to beans, it's a little bit different. Um, but again, it takes the flavor of the seasoning that we use. Uh, it, it's more of a filler to help take away from other, uh, you know, instead of eating so much more meat, so much more rice, you add a little bit of okra to it. That's what, you know, it, it's, it's an added bonus to, they, they used to use it. It is, Jules, very good when you pickle it. I'm not a fan of anything pickled, but everybody says you pick the small ones. If they're the size of your thumb, where's my camera? The size of your thumb and smaller, you take that, you pickle them, amazing. Well, Rob, Primal Cajun, you're here, so all the cool people are here now. Yes, indeed. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, yeah, I mean, okra is not something I'm, I'm not going to pick it off the vine and eat it uh, raw. There is a lot of people that do that. Um, gardening all done all wrong. Grilled okra, I've never tried that. Um, never tried that. If anyone else would like to come in and, and visit, you know, y'all are more than welcome to visit. Like I said, we are waiting for Mr. Homer. Um, I was aware that he would be running a little bit late. I just wanted to get it started, kind of unwind from my time at work and, you know, get a little, um, get a little bit of the nerves off and get some talking going on. Oh yeah, no problem, Mr. Bill. Ms. Val, um, it's, you know, and I think Rob might have done a video last year on smothering it down and, you know, different ways. There's many different ways you can cook and eat okra. Um, 
but the main thing that we use it for is almost like a uh oh um oh a side dish you know a filler a filler broke farmer man i missed you how's it going brother I was telling everybody we're going to be doing a live stream uh, Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, 5 o'clock Central, 6 o'clock. Looking forward to that, talking about tomatoes, pruning, whatever else comes up. Waiting, uh, Still waiting for Mr. Homer to come in. I posted the link. I'll post it again if anybody else wants to come up and talk about anything. We can talk about it. Oh, there's Jules. Jules, what's up, brother? Man, that's hey. some hair white. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not feeding back, am I? I'm, I'm on the cell phone. I heard StreamYard nope. doesn't work well with uh, stream, uh, well, cell phones. Uh, I'm, I'm not hearing any uh, any issues with it, man. All right. I'll keep your seat warm until we get Micro in here. That's good. Hey, tell us about your community y'all starting up a little bit more some of the most of the people in here probably know about it but it'd be great time uh, to talk about it a little bit more well uh, if, if you club, want if work club carolinas there's a club south carolina two different clubs and they've both already had get-togethers um cookout and uh let's see club south carolina got together at a public facility i think about three channels were there you know but it's probably about a dozen people Nice. Um, it's really just a local support network, but it's affiliated through the Garden Gurus uh, right. hashtag. But it's really, I mean, YouTube's part of it, but it's more than YouTube. You know what I mean? There's a right. web page. And, and the web page, you're going to end up, there's going to end up, you, people's going to find you through forums and all kind of stuff like that. Right. Um, you know, it, it's similar to what the, uh, the Bayou Gardener uh, web page, and I've spoke with him with, uh, about him with John. You know, Mr. Donald, the uh, web Cajun from YouTube, he passed away a few years back. But uh, he had also set up a forum and, and a website where um, he would share information and people would share information. And uh, it got to be a pretty big deal. I was able to make the last get-together they had, and we had over 100 people at that get-together. Wow. And there was there was actually someone that came in from Australia that, that you know, oh, to wow. visit. Yep, the, the people from all over, people would plan their – their um, vacations on the summers to come down. <clears throat> Dag on. That reminds me of YouTuberi. That was a bunch of outdoors people. Right. And they were doing it probably about seven years. <laughs> uh, and then last year they couldn't because of you know what. Right. Uh, but yeah, they're just a bunch of outdoor people. They'd have chili cook off and a catfish mm -hmm. tournament and just hang out for a weekend at one guy's place in Kentucky. Uh, but that's kind of what. The idea is for this, but it's really about the local clubs. I mean, there's a national affiliation, but the whole right. point is like what we were just talking about, the okra. And I agree with what you said. Um, around here, I'm not even messing with it till the ground gets warm enough. Um, last year, it starts in the egg carton, starts in the trays, and then straight to the ground. Right. And none of it made a bit of difference. At the end of the day, they were all the same height. Produced yeah, okra doesn't them. like to be transplanted. I mm -hmm. found that. It doesn't yeah. like to be transplanted. Um, and there's, no, there's no reason to start it early. No, it not, doesn't none at give all. you an advantage at all. It's all about the weather. Well, and um, Eric Hale, one of my mm -hmm. friends from YouTube, he planted out a big row. You know, we, they came up. They did great. They came up. They were about five feet tall. And he kept, he, we, he'd message me almost daily, man, I'm not even seeing flowers. What's wrong? The plants are beautiful. And I kept telling him, your, your ground temperature's not right. Right. Your ground temperature's not right. And he hit like five or six days in the mid seventies. And as soon as that ground temperature warmed up to 72 degrees for three days straight, the flowers, poof, he yeah. felt, he's like, oh my God, I don't know what to do with all the okra I'm getting now. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it, they will grow. But the, the point of where they, you know, where they're at and growing and, and producing makes uh, um, the, the flowers won't produce the, um, the, um, the DNA of the temperature's not right in the soil. It won't okay. tell it to start producing flowers until the, the it's, right. it's right. Let me, let me take a second. Hey, Miss Gail, um, Urban Girl Gardening, Miss Kiki, um, Ed's Crazy Homestead. Hey, Ed. 
I'm not used to having this many people in a live stream. <laughs> it's usually five or six, seven. Try not to miss anybody. Looked like a dozen when I got up here. It's showing 16 right now. I'll be dang. That's pretty good for the afternoon. That's, that's one of the best I've had so far. It must be because Mr. Home is coming. That's the title, man. Everybody wants to know how to grow this thing called okra. Okra. And, and <laughs> the, biggest, the biggest thing about okra, like I was saying earlier, you know, it, it takes off and it's, it's a good side dish. It's easily flavored with whatever you want to cook. Um, right. You know, whenever you're cooking any type of uh, gumbos or stews, you know, or side dish, we like to cook it. We smother it down. It basically it's a bunch of okra seeds and mush around it. I cook it down that much, and you put yeah. a put it in a cup on the side, eat it with rice and gravy. You know, some meat, not right. not brown gravy. You know, it's like the rice and gravy we make around here. Right. Um, yeah, I love <laughs> some gumbo, man, and I uh, love some okra. And we'll take it, uh, make bottle caps out of it and fry it up. Yeah. I don't know when you're talking about Fried okra is good. Yeah. I don't, I mean, you can fry it whole, but around here, we chop it up in the, yep. like nickels. And, uh, you know, if you're doing seafood, man, just throw some Old Bay on that, you know, and now you got the Old Bay seasoned okra fried up. <laughs> like you were saying, it kind of, you know, cuts back on eating so much of everything else. It, it does. And, it, it always grew well. I'm gonna bring Mr. Uh, Mr. Home up in a second. One second, Mr. Home. Um, it always grew well, and but the people in the area. Oh, how you doing, Mr. Homer? Um, it, it was a good side dish, and people would eat that to help cut back. Uh oh, yeah. Well, maybe I was getting a little feedback. Um, the uh, it, it was a side dish. The people were poor, so that would grow plentiful. And easy, and they would they would use it to eat, oh, yeah. eat a little bit of meat, a little bit of rice, and fill up on okra. It takes the taste of whatever else you're using. Kind of like a hush puppy. Yep, exactly, exactly. Oh, Flour. Hey, out of here, man. I'm gonna get off y'all's show. I know y'all had to set up. Uh, oh man. Do what? I, I said it ain't no big deal. If you want to stay and visit, you might have some questions too, or you can sit back. However you want to do it. Okay. We just I'll wanted just to visit. Out. I'll just chill okay. out. <laughs> no. You gotta run. You gotta run away from me, Jewel. I, no, still I, was, love just, you. I was just keeping the seat warm for you. Oh. <laughs> I appreciate. I appreciate. I appreciate it. I, mean, I, thought the, I thought it was with. I thought your names in the thing. Uh, Okra. I mean, I don't yeah, know. But y'all had, I don't know if y'all had a script. Oh, no, no. Had, no, no, oh, no, no, oh, no, no, no. Oh no! What, Go what, ahead and explain it. Um, I was explaining my video that I put out the other day about putting okra seeds in the bleach. Cause I got some seeds from Britain farm homestead and they did red okra. And I know I talk, is that my phone? Is that me? I'm not sure. It could be mine, man. I'm outside in the wind. I'm going to, I'm going to mute, uh, mute your mic, uh, Jules. One second. I'm going to uh, see if it keeps doing it. Hello. Hello. Oh, it stopped. Yeah. It stopped. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, that's you, Jules. But, yeah, I was gonna say. Hold on, let me mic. There you go. Okay, so people was a little concerned about me putting the the okra seeds in the bleach, soaking them for fifteen minutes. So I was telling people in the video <laughs> that you had mentioned to put yep soak the seeds in bleach for fifteen minutes, then rinse them off, clean them off, and then plant them. Yep. So I just want you to explain, because I never grew okra in my life. So I remember last year I was trying to grow them. You said they might grow, and they got so far, and then the forest came and took yep. them out. Correct. So I grew them late. So you can explain about the bleach and okra seeds. Well, the, the thing with okra, you could put them in bleach for 15 minutes, or you could soak them overnight in water. Um, if you soak them in the bleach for 15 minutes, you'll actually see that hard outer, let's see, the hard outer covering of the seed once you start soaking them, it actually makes a chemical reaction. The bleach removes that hard outer coating, and you'll see it starts to peel on the outside, the, the top part of it, and you'll actually see the little tail from the seed starting to pop out. And if your ground conditions and everything are right, you don't you don't want to do it if you're planting early. You know, if you're going to plant real early, you have your conditions have to be right because your plant's going to come up. <laughs> you got somebody uh. Yeah, girl, exactly. open up something they purchased. 
Okay. Um, but you'll have the, the tail and everything will come up. And within two days, you know, if you, if you soak them in bleach within two days, most of the time you'll have your plants breaking the ground and they'll start rooting out and everything already. Okay. It, it's, it's I super did see that. In the video, I know you just got off. You just came back to shore. Mm -hmm. Correct. But if you watch the video, you're going to see the seeds that shell bust open or it got soft, real soft. Yep. So I did try to show people that in the video that if if it works, it works. I, I'm blaming Cajun. Oh, wait, wait. I'll, I'll send you some more stuff. <laughs> if it you point the jewels. <laughs> you guys can't, you guys don't hear that clicking? Nope. No, not I'm now. Still, no. Nope. When, 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 we, when you're muted, we don't hear it. You can hear it now? Yep. Huh. All right, let me mute it up. Well, I'll tell you what, let me just get out of y'all's thing anyway. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'll probably help with helmet head, too. But thanks All for, right. thanks for Thank having you. me. Thank you. Thanks for jumping Sorry. in, Mr. Jules. Have a good one. Yeah, man. Yeah, Thank man. you. We'll catch you. Yeah, so... So I just wanted you to explain to a few people that hit me up and saying they never heard of that yeah. season bleach. Okay, let me let me let me tell some people uh, hello again. Uh, we just gonna make around, Mister uh, Mister Robert Homestead Aquarius, uh, Urban Girl Gardening Kiki, uh, Lions Crest Farmer G, Miss Jan Simply Jan Homestead, Miss um, Gail Canadian Proud Get Outdoors Gail at Gail Southern Living. Um, Primal Cajun, it's crazy homestead. Thank y'all all for stopping by. Uh, if y'all have any questions, we talking okra today, Bob. <laughs> I get my get my patriots. I gotta get my patriots in, in, in oh. the street. Yeah, <laughs> y'all in the same boat as us. You ain't got a quarterback either, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the states don't have one. We don't have one right no, now. We trying though, but um, uh, yeah, it's it. The, um, it was one of my great uncles that told me that about the uh, the bleach soaking them in okra, and they used to plant, uh, you know, two acres of, of okra when he was small. Because before you got on here, <clears throat> um, Lions Crest, fifteen minutes is, is it's not the key. Um, you want to wash the seeds. Yeah, let, let, I'm gonna start over. Whenever you're soaking the seeds, you want to take a, a bowl, a large bowl, or you know, a bowl bigger than um what what you have you know more than the seeds you don't want the seeds to be really compacted you want it to be able to move around you want to have good contact with uh i'm not answering you right now broke farmer you're being mean <laughs> um you want to have good contact with the bleach so you, you know you want to kind of stir them around and everything like that um depending on you know, if the bleach is new, might be a little bit old. You're going to see if you wash the seeds, especially the ones on the top or as you're moving them around, the top coating, the harder coating of the okra seed is going to kind of start to almost smear away, pull away, and you'll start seeing the back end of the tail start to come out. Um, it's something you want to watch while you're doing it um, because you don't want to overdo it. But we've had to wait, as, as, you know, with the, the temperatures outside, it'll make a difference also. If it's cold or outside, it'll take longer. If it's hotter, it'll go faster. But um, it, once you start seeing a couple of the little tails pop out in the back of the seed, which is the root that's pushing out, once you see that pop out, you want to take it out and rinse it off real good. You want to you want to stop the chemical reaction that's causing the okra seed to soften up for the tail to be able to pop out. So, you know, it... 10 minutes will be good, you know, 17, 20 minutes might even be good. Um, but you want to start with, uh, you know, you want to watch what's going on. Um, we use straight bleach, Kaleidoscope Junkie, straight bleach, um, Clorox, or, you know, anything from the dollar store. Um, it, it really doesn't make a big difference. The, the whole thing is, you know, you want to try it. Don't, if, if you have 10 seeds and you want to plant 10 plants, I wouldn't try all 10, 10 seeds with it, you know, but if, if you have extra seeds that you want to give it a try and try it, it worked great for us. Um, seems like uh, Mr. Homer seen promise with it that it might work for him also. Um, back to my uncle, he was 87 years old when he told me about it, man. I thought he was crazy as hell. You know, they know it. It's going to kill all my seeds. And um, sure enough, it, uh, 
I mean, it worked. <clears throat> I planted the seeds like four inches apart, thinking half of them would have died from from putting them in there. And I had the whole row was slap full of okra. It's like 97 percent of the seeds germinated. And we planted a row side by side with them, just the seeds planting them in the row. And we had issues with them germinating because they are so hard. Um, we didn't get any rain at the time that we were putting it that we put them in the ground so and we wasn't keeping the ground wet enough for the seeds to be able to pop like they needed to now my question is when you plant the oak that's gonna be my next question so all y'all here gonna hear me ask him now do you plant it just like corn the same foot of about uh, 12 10 inches apart like you, five by five? that's another it, it depends how you want to grow your okra um, it, the variety, just like a tomato plant, the variety of okra you grow is gonna gonna make a difference. Some of them, like the um, Clemson spineless, is one I know. Um, that's we grow that around here often, and it's most cow horns, it grows tall. <clears throat> and what we do, we don't let it branch out into a, a, a tree. Some people let it they grow okra trees. You know, if you let it go, the base of an okra tree will be that big around you know, by the end of the summertime over here because of the amount of time it'll grow until the until it freezes. Um, what we do is we let it grow straight up like you'd be growing corn. And every time you cut off the, um, when you cut the okra, you also cut the branch underneath it because um, that branch will end up growing out and making a sucker similar to what a tomato does. And that's what produces the trees. If you leave it for it to, you know, if you want to grow an okra tree, you'll get a whole bunch of okra at one time. It takes a lot of room, but you get a whole bunch of okra at one time because you're basically just like a tomato. Your suckers are producing, you know, the branch will grow out. You'll make more flowers off of that branch and it'll continue to branch out and make more flowers and make more okra. But it also slows down the initial portion whenever you're going to be getting the okra. If you're just getting it and letting it grow tall and you're cutting off the okra, you know, every two to three, four days, you'll be getting the okra off of each plant. Um, if you let it, if you let it go out, it'll. Oh, they go Britain Farm, the one who gave me the seed. So Britain Farm, I told you and Casey is gonna be fighting if my okra seeds don't go. So he was just explaining about that bleach. With no, the, uh... they, they're gonna go. You, that's from South Louisiana. It's gonna work. If it don't work, it's microfarmer's fault. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> no, and you, you are you are starting a little early. Um, before you got on here, we did talk the. Um, Whenever uh, transplanting okra, they don't really transplant well. They, they they don't normally die, but they do go into kind of a shock, and um, you end up with almost the same amount of growth over the period as you would just starting to seed out in the you know in the ground. Um, when you soak your seed in the Clorox and then plant it out where you want to plant it, <clears throat> and um, the the ground temperature makes a big difference. You know so if, if you're Go ahead. So you saying okra. Now I'm in Connecticut. Let everybody know I'm in Connecticut. I know Britain Farm is in Georgia and you in Louisiana. So y'all in a like a hot climate right now, right? Right. Yeah. Now you say I probably start too early. Is okra a midsummer crop? No, okra loves heat. Loves heat. They they they'll grow in in ground temperatures about 65 to 75. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll grow, but they really like ground temperatures. But before they'll normally start flowering, they want a few days of 72. You know, you could put um, plastic or something on the ground to help retain the heat and store the heat and grab the heat from the sun and, and trick them into it. Um, but they do like before they'll start flowering. Um, I, I know you've, you you know, Eric, you've seen Eric Hale's video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, he was growing, and we were talking about that also before you came in. Oh, he had a problem last year, right? He, had a, he, he, he yeah, didn't have a problem. Off. Exactly. He didn't have a problem. He just planted early. And yeah. um, by planting them early, he had some nice big plants, but he never had the ground temperature for it to, to kick in the hormones for it to start flowering. And then they hit a week of 70-plus degree temperatures, oh. and he's like, oh, my God, I don't know what to do with all the okra. He yeah, had like 150 feet of it, 100 feet of it. No, I haven't he, seen him either in a while. No, he, he, I talked to him the other day. He's doing, you know, he's making it. Um, okay. he, he's going to be starting back up. He didn't have much going on this winter. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, somebody had said something.
Yeah. You can, like like uh, Miss Danny says, with happy farms, they're heat lovers. You can almost ignore them during the summertime. Yeah. Um, once They grow a, a nice tap root down the middle, and then they'll spread out, and they'll make a huge root system. And um, they, they don't need a whole bunch of water, especially early on. You can really overwater them. <clears throat> you don't want to let them completely dry out. Um, Bridget Farm says something here in Georgia. They're putting off so much in the months of July and August that is the hottest months. We get a 90 to 100 degrees here in these months, and, and that's exactly right. They're a tropical fruit that, that loves to grow in, in those types of temperatures. Um, easily, easily growing. You know, it's 100 degrees. They, they pollinate themselves, and shoot, it's 110 degrees over here sometimes in, in July and August. And, you know, 90% humidity feels like we breathe in water and they're still blowing and going. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, like Mr. Uh, like Mr. Roberts says, the, um, once they get blowing and going, it, it's hard to stop them and they won't stop until you get a freeze, you know, a good frost or a freeze. Um, we've had some that overwintered over here. Um, the grass just got tall in the, uh, in the garden, the, the big garden plot we had, and the wind would blow them down. They were 12, 13 feet tall. The wind blew them over sideways, and they were just mounded up in the grass, and we started cleaning it out, and they had, you know, another 8, 10 foot that they grew through the wintertime with, with okra sitting on them because it never, uh... Oh, Mr. CB, you just noticed that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> all the clean up? Oh. Yeah, clean Clean 13 inches of uh, beard. Yeah, I was a little concerned because I was trying to reach you because I heard something happen on a, a oil rig out there, a ship that was going out there. It was oil. it was a lift boat. Um, it, it wasn't where we were. I do work on those from time to time. Um, not as often anymore as I used to. Uh, just um, just a quick hit on it. Uh, you know, they're, just, they're still looking for some people. It's a sad situation. They were moving around in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, a large lift boat, and they were um, the the forecast wasn't close. They, they were looking at three to five foot seas with fifteen to twenty mile an hour winds, and when it came in, it was a gust of sixty to seventy miles an hour and uh, ten to fifteen foot seas. And when when something like that happens, um, when something it, it's a safe boat to be on. If it's out the water, they have legs on it that it jacks up out the water. That's, it's a lift boat. It lifts itself out the water to be able to do stuff on platforms. Mm. And um, it just, yeah, it, did, it I just heard didn't. About it, I, tried, I thought of you because I know you was out there, right. you know, but I was yeah. like, maybe you couldn't reach me. But um, yeah, I was concerned. I was like, yeah, I probably, you probably got my message now since you're back on shore. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it, out. yeah it, it's, a, it's a, it was a sad, really sad situation. Um, but uh, well, yeah, glad you paid for everything. You know, I God appreciate you know, that. I appreciate it. And, and everyone that reached out to me, thank you all. You know, it's um, looks, <laughs> the gypsy and the vanilla gorilla. How y'all doing? Uh, the obsessive gardener, how's it going? Oh, hello, obsessive gardener. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. there. I got yeah. my glasses on to read. I, I I need I should have mine on, but I'm having it. I, it aggravates me with the reflection from the monitor. He's talking about my uh, my new beard. He, he's not a fan of it, but I, I I had way more than enough of that that mess with the wind and everything we've been having. It was 14 months I've been going. Oh, okay. Britain Farm saying uh, I could plant them in a peat. Well, you talking pot. about peat moss, a peat moss oh, pot? peat pot, the little jiffy pots, the little brown pots that look like cardboard. Yeah, yeah. And I might just stretch it out. Well, you might not have the issues with it um, with the transfer. I have, those, I have those peat pots. I have those, yeah. but then again, I don't have that many because I planted 72 of them. So it 72 on. seeds? Yeah. Dude, you're going to have, you, you ain't going to know what to do with that okra. No, but see, people who don't be following me that be acting like they follow me, I have three yards to do now. I have yeah, my yard, my neighbor's yard. I got I, three big yards. I understand that, but that's that's a lot of okra when it starts producing. <laughs> yeah, I have room for it. I, I put a, a market out in the front of here because I'm planning to put that okra seed in the front. If y'all watch my videos, the yeah, front your of my, my wall, 
that rock wall, I'm planning to plow that all up, till that okay. all up, amend that soil, which it should be great soil, and put the okra seeds in probably in a four rows, probably whatever, you know, and let it grow. And I told my neighbor, I said, if somebody decided to pull their car over and steal somebody, hey, whatever, bro. Yeah. I'm planning to put corn in the front. I'm putting okra in the front of the house, bro. This year's going to look like a farm out there. You might be lucky to find 10 people that's not gardeners that know what okra is. They're going to think you're growing weed in the front of the house. <laughs> uh, honestly, honestly, you'd be surprised the people that see that, see okra, and, and they're not gardeners, and think it's 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 weed that, that's growing in the front. Oh, or, right. you know, they, they actually had a, uh, some people that were growing in their backyard, and they had um, the SWAT team went in there. They were eating... <laughs> they were eating supper with their kids and they went with their guns drawn and everything. Uh, the helicopter had passed over and seen it. They thought it was weed. They went out there, they, the whole eight by 10 uh, plant, like 60 plants in an eight by 10. Went and cut it all down, got back. He's like, hey, Captain, look what we got. He's like, where y'all got all that okra at? He's like, that's weed. He's like, no, that's okra. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> Boone, how you doing? Thank you for stopping by. And um, <laughs> Walsh Farms, <laughs> thank you for stopping by. Dan, Permaculture Food Forest, what's up, brother? Um, yeah, we kind of discussed in okra. We, we've gone over it a couple times, uh, just, you know, using the uh, bleach solution. Well, it's not bleach solution. Using bleach to soften the outside of the roots. I'm sorry, the outside of the uh, seeds for the okra to be able to do it, um, help promote the, the germination of the seed faster. It removes the outer hard coating, um, soak it for 10 to 15 minutes. It removes the outer, the, the hard outer coating of it. And you'll actually see the little tail starting to pop out of the seeds as it's going. Um, it, it works well. It's tried and true down here. Mr. Home was trying it. He was getting some, some flack from, uh, different people it's saying it wouldn't work. It's on food. On food. <laughs> um, you know, so that, that's what we got going on. We, we're not going to make a whole bunch of fun about Mr. Homer being on Team It Grows Slow because it won't grow. <laughs> you know. Hold up. I mean, see, you just came to shore. I got a couple of videos out yesterday. I got a couple of your teammates hostage. got POWs. <laughs> I seen that one. Oh, you know that one? Yeah. Because... <laughs> I want. Well, I understand we all part of Shed Wars. A lot of us here are Shed Wars. Let's get going. Let's get creative, man. That's why we like. I be thinking of everything to try to talk against you, Luke, Luce Fawcett over there, Hydra, um, um, Homestead Aquarius. As a few, nobody's safe on y'all team. The Woodcut. It doesn't matter. I, I, I've been waiting. I, I put out my SmackDown video, and you're the only one that responded, and it was weak. Oh, I mean, it's like yeah. in weak. It's like, oh my god, that's all he got. That's all he got. Then, then John comes back and calls me a uh, oh my my nickname's a uh, oh shoot I, it was so good I don't even remember what it was a muskrat a Louisiana muskrat I'm like we even got muskrat south of I ten we swamp rats you know yeah, swamp rat. thank you thank you I'm a swamp rat you know woo -hoo. <laughs> coming oh, from a jellyfish with no backbone nah cool. <laughs> Oh, I will be doing my video on him to Nick for oh. his nickname. Are you you welcome, Cajun? I mean, I mean, Canadian pride out get outdoors. Yeah, because that mug. I mean, to send you a four dollar mug, it was costing me fifty five dollars American dollars. <laughs> to send you a four dollar mug, I was like, ah. Oh. So I sent you the the card. So in case Amazon ships up there, whatever, because shipping from America to to wherever you was at was fifty five dollars for a four dollar mug. That was like, that was like kind of crazy. When they told me the price, I was like, whoa. That's why now I see people who do do giveaways. They say, if you, you live in Canada, no Amazon. <laughs> because it's hard. It seems like it's hard to ship from here to there. But people say Canada is the reverse because y'all can ship here cheap. Yeah. Uh, I sent a shirt to Canada to um, a little dirt never hurt, one of my shirts. Mm -hmm. And um, it was like $35. I'm like, oh my God. But I, I did. I had to order some more shirts, and I have like ten shirts I'll be sending out. You're one of them. The uh, Dragon Fruit is going to be coming with that shirt. Um, I got a shirt to send to Lions Crest, um, Mr. Robert. It, the sizes just wasn't working out in the amount of time I had the last couple times I was in to get them. Uh, I got a list. I got a bunch of them. Yeah, I brought a Dragon Fruit. The fruit fruit. <clears throat> yeah, it's some good eating. 
No, I haven't eaten yet. Still in the refrigerator. Um, my well, I, my dragon fruit took a hit. I was gonna, I'm gonna do a video on it. I was taking them out the garage the other day from that Arctic front that passed through. Mm -hmm. I was at work when it hit, and it was just a horrible, <laughs> horrible situation. I'm pretty sure I lost uh, at least ten plants completely, and um. No, Mr. CB, none of them have pockets. Some of them now do have long sleeves, though. Um, <laughs> uh, plant the seeds, Homer. Yeah, Bob, Bob, he said plant the seeds, but he also said instead of using the peat pots to uh, plant them in like a one-gallon container, he said it earlier in the stuff, um, plant it in a one-gallon container and let the plants get good size and then transplant them out. Yeah, because I'm taking your idea. That, I mean, not your idea. I said that in one of my videos, so you got to catch up on video. Is I'm gonna put tape over that PVC pipe on that hoop house, and I'm gonna put mm -hmm. some plastic over when it starts cooling down for the fall. And I'm thinking that the, if y'all been watching my, some of y'all been watching my videos, my chicken my chicken coop has a fireplace in it, one of those electric fireplaces. Right. And I'm thinking I might can get away if you if the dragon fruit that you send me, the cutting whatever you send me, is put the plastic over, seal up the front of that chicken. I mean the chicken run, the 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 hoop house, and actually when it gets cold, put that. Because the heater has a thermostat. So when it drops in temperature, it cuts on. When it comes up in temperature, it cuts off. So I'm thinking about putting it on a timer, electricity out there, and just sit it between the rays bed and let it, during the winter time heat up when the sun don't kicks up. I'm going to send you one that can self-pollinate itself. And you can actually put it in something and, you know, in a pot that you can move in and out of a um, or the house of, of, or, or your uh, garage. It, you know, with the single one, I'm going to get to you in a second, Mr. Ed. Uh, we got Mr. Ed's getting ready to come up with Ed's Crazy Homestead. Um, we, uh, you, you can actually move it in, in and out. It doesn't take up a whole bunch of room. You'd probably want to plant it in like a five to nine gallon bucket. They do make some pretty good sized roots. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the, um, but, but, we could talk about it, you know, and oh, yeah, you, you want to have it because it gets to a certain point and it kind of rolls over and mm -hmm. then it sends out shoots and the shoots is where you want the, um, your fruit to come off of. All right. It, so I think, I, got, I think I, if you tell me, so instead of going with a one gallon pipe, so you'll think I should do what you did. Take one of those six gallon buckets and for dragon can, fruit. Yeah. For the dragon fruit. Yeah. Oh yeah. With dragon fruit, you're going to need it. Yeah, in a gallon, like six gallon bucket or something. I, I got, I have mine in 25 gallon buckets and I got three plants per bucket, but that's the way I, I did it like that because I was planning on having, I, I wanted a big, I, I was planning on making a dragon fruit farm at one time because I enjoy it. How you doing, Mr. Ed? One second. Um, and I just haven't got to put the tops on it. You put a canopy across the top and the, the main root growing down, I mean, the main plant growing down from the bottom, it goes out. And once it gets to a certain point over, you, you trim the ends, the tip to where it restricts the growth. And then it sent out laterals similar, you know, to like a, uh, like your pepper plant did. You know, when you topped your pepper plant, it yeah. sent out all those laterals. This will do the same thing. And your laterals is where you want your fruit to grow off of. So that's what I was thinking about. If you do, if you send me that and that works, I was thinking about if you saw my, the hoop house, I would put it towards the back. So it'll, it'll follow the hoop house. Like you said, when it comes up and when it spreads out, uh, then I put some string or something, a string in it so it can go across. It'll just come string. across. You, you can put string, cable. Yeah, you, uh, it, it, it does get pretty heavy. It you will get heavy. It's, um, and it does grow fast when it's warm. When the temperatures are right, it does grow fast. Um, you, you just don't want frost on it. If it gets frost, it, it'll, uh, you know, it, it hurts them bad. I'll put them in the garage over here. Okay. And until we got into the single digits, with mm -hmm. no, I didn't have any heat. I wasn't here. Yeah, to be able to heat it. So until it got in the single digits, we didn't have any issues at all. The plants were actually starting to grow again, and then that uh, that that Arctic front hit us, and I I lost a lot. Oh, okay. So, how you doing, Mister Ed? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing good. Hold on one second. Uh, Geeky Gardens, how's it going, brother? Been a while, Mister Jack. Hope everything's going good for y'all. I'm gonna make a quick look, make sure I didn't miss anybody. In the sides. Early Bird Farms, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by, brother. Mr. Ronnie, you have a good one. How's it going, Mr. Ed? Can you hear? Yeah, I can now. I'm 
it figures I'm crossing from Oklahoma into Texas and I'm going to lose this, my signal. <laughs> okay. But no, what I saw that video micro farmer did with the okra. So can it see and it? I'm thinking of my, yeah. And I'm look, thinking to myself, has micro farmer lost his mind? Why would you do that? Now it makes sense. The he way made, you explained it. He made friends with a Cajun and we lost our mind and tried it and it worked. So we passing it on and helping everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's it, right it, and it's the chemical reaction you know from the clorox it, it actually gets warm um the couple actually get hot if you fill up enough okra seed in it with the clorox it'll get hot and melt a plastic cup we did a pound one time a pound of okra seed which is way more than anybody would ever need to plant you know i mean it's a pound of plant like two acres and we planted it on a quarter acre we had way too much um but yeah, it, it, it does. It works well. Um, rinse them off after, and it, it's an amazing time saver on okra. And the, the amount of seeds you get that that actually um, pop quick, and you're able to, to use compared to planting them out in the dirt on their own, um, it's probably 60, 70 percent more take by soaking them. Even if you just soak them in water overnight, you can soak them in water for 24 hours, or you can soak them in the um, the bleach for 15 minutes and you plant them rinse them and plant them yeah see I'm, I'm learning a lot from all these different channels that are gardening and all that because i'm not a big time gardener i've never heard of soaking seeds before you plant them or using bleach before you plant them and i just planted okra two weeks ago and they're growing really nice and i live in louisiana also yeah but we've been getting a lot of rain you, you've been tell me soil, about it. Well, the soil's been staying moist. The, um, that, that's the biggest. You know, when you plant your okra seed, you have to your soil has to stay wet or moist. You know, you can overwater them, and then they end up uh, dampening off. Um, whenever you're trying to get the seeds to pop, and the biggest issue when you only have a, a, a small amount of okra seeds, you know, it's it's not a big deal. But when you're planting out in a garden and you're planting, you know. Two, three hundred feet a row of it, you know, five, six hundred plants, you end up with that's a lot of um, water in to take care of to get them to pop. So soaking the seeds either in water or in, in, the, in the bleach solution, in the bleach, really helps, you know, dial in on the amount of plants you're going to end up with. Right. But no, I'm, I'm learning a lot from everybody, all the channels. It is. I mean, I'm sorry that, you know, the guy right here has to be on Will It Wilt's team. He should be over on our team. No, no, it's okay. no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe good at cut wood. That's all y'all good at, cutting wood. But do you see you're in between two woodcutters? <laughs> oh. Yeah. I can hold my own. From uh, pound for pound, I can hold my own. Well, I'm going to just say for the amount of space, that I'm a growing, I can hold my own. Because that's a problem that I think Ed was having. Because I tell people off the heartbeat, it doesn't matter what I grow on my property. There's no way I'm going to be Cajun Hyponics. Heinz Ketchup will have no problem about tomato shortage. I said that to him. He has so many tomatoes growing in one, just one of his hoop house. What the hoop house, whatever, hoop, hoop house. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. I couldn't let my I couldn't let my boy hang out by himself like that. I could, uh, I, I, good, good. I could not. Uh-uh. Wait, wait, I was who doing you, wrong. You here to hang with me or you here to take up a micro farmer? Because hey, you're here uh, to take up a micro farmer, you gotta go. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Uh let's say both because I was coming in here, I was gonna come in and say hey and how you doing, because I'm still gonna do that, but then then Ed's crazy homehead with his crazy self had to say, you're in between two woodcutters. Now you ain't in between two woodcutters. Now we got a little versus going on. There you go. There you yeah. go. Oh, he's dead. Thank you. Hey, what's up? How you yeah. doing, brother? Doing good, brother. How y'all doing? But, Michael, yeah. what you're getting ready to say is like when I got put in um, Shed Wars 21, Yeah. John thought I was just growing in containers. So he would... You know, give me a little bit of grief about it until I put the video out of a 25 by 48 foot garden. He didn't know what to do then. <laughs> yeah. I just want for everybody in the shed wars. And again, I know Homestead Aquarius always talk about that. 
Uh, it's certain things when you take it on challenges, right? Because I don't want nobody feeling to get hurt in the middle because I've been yeah. around a little bit with Shed Wars. Is <clears throat> I joke about a lot of stuff because I'm going to see a lot of you guys lose a lot of your crops to insects, especially in the South. Between either a heat wave come through and take your crops out or y'all get infested with insects a lot. So, yeah, you start off looking great like a, like a sprinter, you know. You take off, it's the long run. You know, so that's what I'm saying. Be careful how you challenge people because I've seen a lot of people go down because of uh, unfortunate incidents like, yeah. like, like a hurricane comes through, a tornado comes through. Or they use Roundup in their fertilizer mix. Yeah, I heard yeah. about that. Hey, hang, about hang on one second. I want to answer Mr. Dan with uh, permaculture. Dan's yeah. permaculture. Um, Dan. We direct sow the seeds. We we don't transplant them. We tried it one time. There was no actual uh, benefit to it. They actually slowed down. We, we put the transplants in the seed in, right next to the rows where the other ones were, and there was no noticeable difference. Um, I, I did speak about it. I'm not sure if that, that a lot of people might not have been in here. Um, the old guy that I learned to grow the okra from would always start his beans. He would grow his beans. Once the beans were done, that's when he planted his okra. He said the, the okra, the ground wasn't ready to support okra unless the beans were dying. So that's that's kind of what we try to do over here. Is um, that, that's what I try to do is when I plant the okra, is put the okra in when the beans are starting to give off. And um, in that Cajun homestead, how's it going, brother? Yeah. So. Yeah. Good. 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 So when? So when do the beans get starting to kind of give out for you where you are? It's it's normally um, probably in the next month. It, this season would be weird. I, I I wasn't able to plant because I that's was what I'm cold. saying. Because I'm like it's it's kind of the cold it was, is. It was 48 degrees this morning. My my raised beds are actually suffering from the low temperatures that we're having. Um, I need to do an update on that. I haven't done that in well over a month. Um, Brother, Tuesday night, Tuesday night, I had water in my wheelbarrow in the backyard. The top layer was frozen. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. North of I-10. <laughs> yeah. North of I-10. No. Um, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it is. We were close. I'm not going to say we were close to having a frost. Uh, about two weeks ago, the front that passed through, they were talking about, a, um, you know, a possible frost in our area. It got down to 41, 42. Um, yeah. The gypsy I'm only a couple hours away from you. You're about six hours if you're in Shreveport, depending on the southern part or the uh, northern part, Mr. Ed. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and um, to the food forest, right? Just want to interrupt. Um, he was saying he just broadcast the seeds in the garden. Now, I did that last year when Mark Arkansas from Woodcutter came and got me to join Shed Wars. I did that, and my theory was called it, throw it down and let nature do its thing. If anybody remember that, I used to say that when I, when I first started microphone. What I did the same thing with um, Dan Permacultures Food Forest said I did that. I just did what nature did, which just broadcast my seeds out there. Right? Some survived, some died. That's why I'm saying don't follow me if you're trying to feed your family from the <laughs> food. Because I did that in majority, and I have a lot of seeds, so I was able to start all over when I got into shed war. So that's how I got to hurt my arm. I, I tore the rotor cup, everything up trying to put those raised beds in because this year is my full year of growing. So anybody who's been following me know those raised beds that you see out there, that was the, those beds were only like three, four months old and they grew a lot because I realized I used my chicken runs manure. You use the compost. Was in there, that was chicken manure and grab that compost that was sitting there probably for about four, three, four years. So I didn't have the money, like not the money, but I didn't have the time to go and get organic soil and all that. And I'm like, I got this pile about four high of chicken manure yep. sitting on the side with a hoop house. So I put all that stuff inside those raised beds, not knowing once I plant those seeds in it, took off. Now, this year, I don't know if it's the, the ratio because last year it took off. Um, that, those raised beds took off. They had so much nutrients in it that yep. those plants sucked it up. But now I don't know if it's depleted. So that's why over the winter time I re, you know, amended the soil over the winter time to try to get it back. And I know I was talking to Farmer Q 
because now I'm looking at in what you want to call it, involuntary plants were coming up that didn't, plants. Plants. Yeah. That didn't germinate last year. And I know some of your gardens, your gardeners pull those up because you plant certain things. And what I plan to do, like I said, I'm an experimental gardener, is to let it go. And if I see I got to put some more, a little bit more fertilizer, I think I was asking Q that, should I leave them and just add a little bit more nutrients to the soil and see what happens? Almost like that three sister, what do you want to call it? I call it three sister gardening. The three sister gardening method. So yeah. I'm not going to pull up these plants that popped up so soon it got warmed up because I think Q was explaining why maybe some of the plants grow because I use organic material like the wood, the chicken wood, the, the litter. Well, I was, yeah, I was kind of telling them that like his soil kind of had held temperature a little bit better because the, the type of manure compost he was using, the thermosilic nature of his compost in general with the bacterial dominance is going to hold a higher temperature in regards to the subsurface level of the soil. Not to get all crazy about it, but below the soil is a little bit warmer where he where he is. You know, so. I understood that better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I, I, I understand what he's saying also, but... Um, when you got volunteers, you know, it's, it's, if you're not set on growing a certain type, because you might have lost a tomato, say you got tomato growing up, you might have lost a tomato that fell on the ground, and that could be a seed. If it was a, a hybrid, then you don't know what type of tomato you're going to be growing. If you're growing heirlooms and you um, you dropped on on the ground, then it's a good chance that you're going to have the same variety coming back up. Um, if you're not set on getting a certain variety or a certain, you know, anything with what you have from the volunteers, sometimes it ends up being a better plan. You know, you just, you're not exactly sure because you didn't specifically plant that seed there to know what it is. Yeah, as I said, when if you watch my videos, I tell you, it's so much stuff when I back skinny, uh, the skinny raised bed I had made on the back of that thing, right. things are popping up where I'm like, I don't even know what's in it no more. It's just... <laughs> And I was telling Q, I'm like, it's like 32 degrees outside. It's like 23, but things were popping up. And that's when he was telling me about the thermo. Right. Because like, we're not even at 65 degrees on a daily basis, and things are popping up. And certain things, like Ed, you know, Ed was telling the people, I don't show y'all everything that's going on because a good car play don't show his hand. So I had stuff growing inside here, but I know last year I got yelled at by the wife because I didn't know better that these dirts that you buy from these companies have gnat eggs in them. They we had a million gnats in the house, and my wife do not like bugs. <laughs> and she, I, if my wife was in the Navy, she would be perfect because she cussed me out. <laughs> and I, the, uh, it seemed like the more I try to kill, every morning we wake up to a million of gnats all through the house. You know, it was just ridiculous. So I had to get the plants out before it got warm enough that those little gnats come out the soil right. that dry, and I ain't trying to get cussed out like I got cussed out. <laughs> <laughs> so, now that's funny. Yeah, I got cussed out, y'all. <laughs> you know, so I learned not to have these plants and pull plants inside the house without now what you call it, using some type of peroxide water or sterilize the soil first, because I didn't know nothing about that. To kill yeah, those yeah. And stuff inside the store. I didn't know nothing about that because I was new to this. Yeah. Next year, I'm hoping not to be growing anything in the house. I'm hoping to have uh, the third greenhouse up and going. Um, half of it's going to be set up for starting plants. Not two, but three greenhouses. It, it was supposed to be one greenhouse. It was supposed to be 34 by 60, and the town wouldn't let me do it because it's a secondhand greenhouse. And I can't get a wind rating on it. I need 150 mile an hour wind rating. The 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 first mayor that when I talked about building, I went to his house, visited with him. He's like, "Oh man, this is we don't need that over here. You know, you don't need the permit, nothing like that. Just build it. It's agriculture." Well, in the process of me building it, I was also stuck at work for an extra six months. I didn't have any time off. Well, by the time everything got taken off, I start putting it up, and I get a little yellow tag on my door from the town. And, um, you know, they, there was a new mayor. There was a new election and the other mayor lost. And this mayor is wanting to follow the rules better. So just long story short, that's why I ended up with three small ones instead of one big one. So I, I actually lost about 600 square feet of growing area for tomatoes. Yeah. Oh, wow. I would have had hinds and hunts tomatoes by the end. Yeah, y'all can put the snacks away. Yes. You can put the yeah, snacks. I'm getting ready to 
uh, build a greenhouse myself for uh, seed starting and to grow inside it. Um, and I'm just going to put power over to it. If I have to put heat in it during the winter time, I'm going to because I want to grow year round. I don't want to just do, you know, summer only, fall, mm -hmm. s summer, spring. I want to do winter garden inside the greenhouse. Well, look, when you do start looking to grow in the wintertime, you uh, also may need to look into uh, extra lights. Um, the amount of light that we get over here is not really good for uh, most plants. Um, you will need some extra portion of light added to it. Um, hey, Cajun, primal, yes, uh, primal, I'm not to interrupt you, but uh, Primal Cajun and I were kind of having a little side discussion about like uh, hydroponics and per light. Uh, Per, not, not perlite versus cocoa, but I was telling him that I enjoyed cocoa as a hydroponic medium, and he preferred perlite because it's cheaper, cleaner, and lasts a few years and everything. And uh, and I'm I just wanted to get your insight on that. It, my thing he got, with a whole green bay. he got a whole hoop house full of perlite because <laughs> I need to go check out Prime Occasion on that regard too, and I need to go check out his videos on that too. No, he just got it too. Yeah, okay, the uh. The, the perlite, like you said, it is reusable, you know, multiple times. You can wash it. Um, Mr. CB at CB's Greenhouse uses the same thing also, um, Greenhouse and Gardens. Um, he actually has a few videos on showing how he washes it and removes um, a lot of the the roots and stuff of it during in between seasons. Talking about this will also get towards something Mr. Ed was talking about. Um, but <clears throat> depending where you buy the perlite from, the price can range like um, where Rob is in Lafayette. It's uh, $34 for four cubic yards. Uh, four, uh, four cubic feet, I'm sorry, not four cubic yards. Four cubic feet of it. Where I'm at, I go to the local uh, farm supply store. He doesn't stock it, but he's able to get it. It could take anywhere from three days to two weeks to get it, but I only pay $17 for the same bag. Um, because he doesn't have to stock it and keep it in storage for me. So I order what I need. But it, it just it, it's made from uh, lava, volcanic lava, and they heat it up so high it pops. It's an inorganic, uh, inert material. It doesn't have any type of um, nutrients or anything with it. So everything you put as far as the fertilizer solution is going to go to your plants. Um, there's very little bit that can be um, – it does degrade – you know, it, it's basically a rock, um, so the water it does kind of beat up it's itself. Hard. You end up with some a little slurry on the bottom of your tanks at the end of the season. Um, it's very dusty. Okay, leave it but like it's up here. Um, but it, it it's a great it, it's something it's really great to be to be using. You know, for it. Um, and as far as um, oh god, I wanted to say something about it. Um, with Mr. Ed, but yeah, with uh, what you were talking about, Mr. Ed, growing year round, July and August over here, the, um, the heat and the humidity is the only thing you can grow is okra. So I use that time of year, the July and August, to really take the time, clean the greenhouse well, and then um, replant it. And uh, we're gonna be let's see, in, instead of like right now, this time of year, we're growing um indeterminate tomatoes through most of the greenhouse uh, in the fall we're going to try to grow determinate varieties that don't want to grow so high because we, okay mr homer um we we, we want to get the period we're going to try to plant in the middle of july beginning of august and try to have everything out by the beginning of december to where we can take it clean the greenhouse again and then replant we can't produce tomatoes between in July and August because of the humidity, the flowers don't pollinate. It's not the heat, the in, in conducive to the pollination and it, the amount of uh, the fertilizer usage because of the heat and everything and the water and the amount of upkeep, it's not there for you to be able to produce tomatoes. But for the plant to be able to grow with shade cloth and you know maybe a fan or something like that, we should be able to get the plant growing. And then as the temperatures are starting to come down, the plant should start flowering. And then once the, if we hit it right, you know, with, with the planting times, by the time the plants are putting the flowers out, the temperature should be down lower to where we'll be, um, be able to produce tomatoes. And then, you know, we'll only have to run the heaters for a short period of time. Um, normally in October, we get one cold front that comes through in the area. 
that normally kills everything we have outside. But after that, it, you know, it'll be minimal work until we're ready to pull those plants out again. Right. Well, I'm going to do a lot of uh, trial and error on growing this year. But my greenhouse, it's going to take me a while to build it because I'm building it by myself. Right. And it's 20 by 25. It's going to be a big greenhouse. That, I, I built all mine by myself. You know, my wife helped me put two pipes in the ground. That was it. Or two, two of the uh, hoops across the top. Everything else I've done over here has been by myself. Yeah, I'm, I'm not doing. I'm doing all wood because I I have it. You know, yeah. it was stuff that I took off my last homestead that I kept. So I'm using all the posts and all the two by fours and all that. And I've already, I bought the plastic a year ago for a greenhouse plastic. So I'm just gonna play around with it and see what I can do. Yeah, you were getting so, ready to say something. To you? So I was just gonna kind of kind of ask a little bit about. So you so with the perlite, um, <coughs> the the cation exchange or the nutrient holding capacity of the perlite. Can you kind of talk about that in comparison to the coconut choir? Because it's like because we didn't really touch much on the coconut choir in comparison and. The reason why I'm asking that is because, you know, like, I think if, if you're if you're really talking about a standpoint of sustainability, like growing food consistently, the perlite is going to beat the heck out of anything pretty much. Right. Um, well, perlite or vermiculite. Some people use vermiculite. Yeah. I have seen very, but the cost of vermiculite uh, as, you know, opposed to perlite is almost twice, you know, the, the cost. Um, and I've never used vermiculite. So, and I've never really used cocoa choir, so I can't really speak on how it work. I, I bought a couple small um, tubes of it. Um, not tubes, uh, little squares of it. Um, yeah, but as, yeah. as far as the perlite, the perlite doesn't absorb. The water retains to the outside or it attaches itself to the outside of the perlite. So, so it, it, yeah. okay, it, doesn't, it doesn't get soggy like a sponge, but yeah. it's there for the roots to take, you know, uptake the nutrients and the water, whatever it needs. So because of that, because of that, per and, and like, I imagine because the perlite has like a, a poor, like a, it does it, it doesn't really have porousness to it actually, but I was actually, because I'm thinking about kind of pumice or pumice or whatever, but like, uh, but with that being said, would, would you have to use more nutrients because of that actual thing that you just said? Like the fact that it's, it's not going like, it's not going to hold on to anything. Like it's going to, it's going to release. It's going to actually let go of that stuff. But for that small window of time that you're actually feeding, but you're actually. Okay. In, in the buckets with the system you have, you try to, you end up leaving probably three quarters of an inch to an inch, depending on how low or how high you set your, your drain lines on it. We're using a, a recirculating system. Um, so what it does is you have a tank set in the ground. It pumps out the tank into the buckets. The buckets get to a certain point. It overflows into the drain and it returns back into the sump and it just recirculates it. Um, okay. And it does seem we, we do it three times a day, put the pump on for three times a day. And I'm running at a half hour a day right now. I, I used to run at 15 minutes. Um, and I, I'm just I'm running at a half hour just to see the difference in it. But the. Uh, it, it, it will actually pull up um, the moisture. It, it, it will wick up whatever fluid you have in the bottom up to it. Also, as the, the roots of the plants grow, the roots of the plants will sit down in the bottom of it. As far as the PPM and stuff you use, um, it, it, you basically follow the same thing that you would in the cocoa coir. It, it doesn't deplete your nutrients. Um, it, it just... I, I I don't know any you know besides you know physical or actual uh, hands-on experience you know I, they, it, it works you know um, yeah. MH Garden has done it Mr CB's done it for years you know there's there's hundreds of, of other people on YouTube that do it um, with the Perlite it, it's a good system it's relatively easy to maintain and uh, cheap to maintain it's you know depending on the size it can get expensive to to build the system. Um, I'm trying to think that there's a, uh, someone that's been following me for a couple of years on YouTube. They, they actually grow in buckets outside hydroponics. They have a Dutch bucket system that they use outside. And even with the rains and everything, they have it set up um, to where they, they don't get much water intrusion into their buckets whenever it rains. 
and okay. they're, they're gonna they're gonna do a video on it they, they don't like to post it they're, they don't they, they have a viewing channel they don't have a youtube channel so they've, they've sent me one link already of their lettuce setup that they had privately and then they're going to do the same thing with their dutch buckets once they they get it up and running this year because i really want to see how it works um for me it wouldn't be ideal because of the amount of time you know when i'm working i'm working so my wife has to take care of it so the the issue of maintaining the uh the ppms and uh when it rains and stuff like that it, it's not a real good situation for her but for someone that's home all the time or home nightly not really all the time someone that's home nightly that can check the ppms and, and monitor closer than what i can it's uh, you actually hopped on, you actually hopped on the neck like and i'm not going to ask some weird questions out <laughs> stop with this for right now i just want to play police thank you gardner i'm ready for the challenge i'm going to i'm going to um Go to the pizzeria shop. I'm going because they don't make ten actually ten cans no more. They don't make stuff out of ten no more. So I'm going to get one of the tomato cans that they use, the, you know, tomato sauce out. So I'm going to get that, and I'm going to do a broccoli in it, bro. I haven't seen nobody grow broccoli in a can, so that's going to be my challenge. Ten can garden. I didn't forget you, ten can garden. I didn't forget nobody. I challenge. I got homesteaded curry stuff, the ghost peppers. That John sent us. That that's that's going on. I don't show you all my hands, bro, but I show you. I went and got me some of this, and I ain't get you tin can gardener because I'm about to talk crap to you too. Even though you no longer, I don't know if you in shed wars, but that's between me and you about growing something in a can. I know I, I made that mention. So tin can guy, I ain't forget you, bro. Nobody <laughs> safe around Mark Michael Farmer, bro. None of y'all. What's up with my teammates? Yeah, and. Did you guys see uh, the people that are in Shed Wars, the, the video that uh, Homestead Aquarius put out for a grudge, a grudge, grudge match. match? Yeah. I got two people I want to go after. Well, don't even choose me because I'll murder you, bro. <laughs> you know what? I want someone that can grow around the same time I can, not three or four months later. Yeah. That, that's hold, not up. hold up. Hold up. Hold up. And still outdo you, eh? Okay. You got me twisted. Like they say, you got me messed up, bro. <laughs> no, uh, my secret uh, weapon is right on the was left corner down there, bro. My secret weapon is right down at Q. Farmer Q. He's my Jason Avery, y'all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, but yeah, like that. I'll just because I I wanted to finish my my small little point from earlier. So like, and you've touched on it right before, like right before we uh, touched on other stuff, but. You said maintaining the PPM. So does that mean within that recirculation system that you run with 100% per light in your buckets, you actually, all you have to do is just literally come in and just pour a little nutrients every now and then to maintain a certain level of parts per million? Well, you, you're going to, um, what we do is, and, and I'm going to try to do this better. I haven't done it before. Normally what I, I have a 250 gallon tote that I mix up the hydroponic solution in. And um, Mr. CB, he, Mr. CB does it, you know, religiously every four to five weeks he goes in there and he'll remove and clean his tank that way the excess ppm that's uh in there because your plants will take up certain nutrients that they need at certain points but it's not always it's what not exactly the same ones correct so at this point you know they're taking up certain nutrients but a month down the road they might not be so you, you, your ppm will get stacked up in your sump i call it a sump your middle bucket um, in the ground, your PPMs will stack up in there. Even though you're putting 800 to 1200 PPM in there, you might be at 14, 1600. So that's yeah. where your fancy little injection systems come in, huh? Well, like where you have like where you have where you have essentially your some systems are. And correct me if I'm wrong. I might be actually overshooting what I'm thinking is out there. Yeah, I, I think what you're talking about would be a drain the waste system. Mr. CB has a small one set up like that, and also. Um, Oh, some people in Canada, uh, Spring Hill Farms in Canada. Well, no, I'm actually not talking about drain waste. I'm talking about recirculating, but having like something within the recirculate. So imagine, okay, oh, so yeah, you that's know, a high dollar big. That's thing. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, so yeah. it's like essentially a PPM meter that's built within your, uh, like an individualized PPM meter that's built within your, like, uh, your reservoir. It, it's so computer. It's computer based, built into the reservoir, but it, it it not only reads the PPMs, it also reads the NP and K. And oh, man. Time, I bet you can learn to plant so fast with that thing. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's it, 
it's amazing. I've looked at them. The systems are like twelve thousand, fifteen thousand dollars. You know, that's not. I mean, honestly, if you have a big enough, if you have a big enough gig going, I mean, that's not bad. Well, that's, that's for people that use 30, 40, 100 acre greenhouses. You know, that's okay. when they're constantly circulating, but they're not only constantly circulating, they're getting back a, a small percentage of the water that they're putting in. You okay. know, they, they, they say they push out on their first run, they'll push out 1,500 gallons, but they'll only get back, say, 400 gallons. Everything else the plants use up or it stays in the buckets. So then they're just resupplying that and they're, they're checking. It, it's not like the system I have, it, it, it's it's enclosed in itself. Um, Mr. CB likes to use, uh, he, he goes by like one gallon uh, per bucket. Um, two gallons per bucket is good. I think in my greenhouse, I have four gallons per bucket, you know, of, of, of tank in the ground. <clears throat> and um, it'll circulate, especially like when I first planted. Um, I... I I circulated for almost four weeks before I had to add any any fertilizer solution to it. You know, it just kept circulating, so it just kept it just stayed there and kept doing it. So right. the reservoir just kind of slowly dipped down. Slowly until comes down. Yep, yeah. slowly comes down. And uh, at, once it gets to a certain point, um, different pumps. You know, different. Uh, where I'm at right now, I have to keep at least ten inches of solution in the tank, or it pulls air. You know, well, 14 inches because it pulls four inches down in the tank when the pump's running and pushing all the water out before it returns. It um, it, it, it pulls four inches out of it. So I need to keep 14 inches in the tank so it, the pump doesn't suck air and cavitate. Um, but like uh, it's going to be six weeks that I've been using the same tank. I didn't clean it out the last time. And I'm almost at the point now to where tomorrow afternoon – I'm going to pull it out. I'm at like right at 12, 13 inches of, of solution in the tank. So I'll be cleaning it out. When I take that out, I'm going to take it, put it in a tote, bring it around the back, and I'm going to use that in uh, raised beds in the backyard. I'm, I'm trying to not waste. I don't want to just dump it in the bayou or oh, dump shoot. it in my grass. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of slipped on my chair a little bit. Oh, but um, but um, I was like, oh, yeah. So like to that point, um, if you're doing that, if you're actually able to – to maintain that and everything like that, oh, man, I had a brain fart. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I hate that. Oh, no. I hate that. No, I, I think what the question you were getting at was kind of like what we talked about earlier. The longer the same nutrition runs through the system, the PPMs will start stacking up in the system. And, you know, even adding, you know, the lower rates, because I'm getting ready to bump up my tomatoes to 1,200 in the greenhouse, 1,200 PPM with the master blend solution. Uh, master blend, calcium nitrate, and Epsom salt. I'm getting ready to bump them up to 1,200. And at this point, when I go and check the PPMs this afternoon, I might be at 1,200 already because my wife's been adding to the middle greenhouse. Um, she's put about 110 gallons in that greenhouse in the last week, you know, extra. The, the, it pumped itself down, so she had to go back and fill up the tank. Um, but again, we don't know what's left in there. You know, the, the nutrients that are left is probably something that the plants aren't using or they're not using enough of. So if we just keep adding and adding and adding, we, you know, we're going to start having issues with the wrong yeah. nutrients being. Yeah, you're going to start getting lockouts because you're going to have a stack load of this nutrient that the plant's not wanting at all, right? Exactly. But I was going to ask this too, though. This is what I had the brain part about. Like, uh, as far as when you finish all your plants out and everything like that, and you have roots left in your perlite, um, like, would, would you be able to, in essence, use some kind of enzyme to actually flush that through and not have to actually, is there some kind of solution that you can actually flush through to not have to physically get in there? And you're going to have to do that at some point because that's just maintenance. But like, is there something that you can bring the, the man hours to down with the actual enzymatic activity? The, uh, if you put something in there to break it up, you're going to end up having to clean the tank out. No, no matter what, it's going to settle. It's going to sludge kind of at the bottom, huh? It's, it's going to sludge. Even if you put an enzyme, the roots are going to break down. You, they're either going to end up in the bottom of your buckets or they're going to end up in your tank. Um, I don't fit well in my tank. I'm, with the pipe and everything in there, it was like you're squeezing through a door. Um, so you're just doing away with all organic matter. You're like, I'm going to take it that. out. Yeah, and it, it's, a, it's a good practice. You know, you take what I do is I take it out, um, I take screen, and I have a four by eight. Uh, setup that I use with two by fours and I have two by fours underneath. I take it. Well, let me start from the beginning. What I normally do is shut the water off, you know, 
10 days to 14 days ahead before I want to plan to pull the plants out the buckets. That way the plants will uptake as much of the, uh, the nutrients and, and the water and stuff that's still in there and the plants will die off on their own. So the, the, um, your buckets will actually be much drier than if you top, you know, I messed up one time, cut the tops of the plants off and started trying to clean them and the buckets were saturated. You know, the root systems were still wet. The root systems are still kind of growing. And that really increased the amount of man hours it took to clean the, the, um, gotcha. the chair light. So if you take it 10 days, 14 days ahead of time, you shut the water off and don't pump any more solution to them and you're able to keep the water out of it, they'll actually dry up the, the buckets to where it's perlite and roots inside of it. You know, you pull your bucket, you, you cut the top off of it, you pull your paint strainer out the bucket, you walk outside, you take it out, you shake it, and about 80% of your uh, your perlite will come off of it. I imagine even the perlite that you have kind of dust off and fall off or whatever, if you have like a shop vac dedicated just for the fact of picking up perlite or something, you clean the floor beforehand, get everything nice and sparkly, and then any residual you have just... Oh, the wind blows it. The, the top oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not even thinking you know, about the fact yeah. that it's like, yeah, I got yeah, you. Yeah. The top portion of it dries out pretty quick. You know, the top yeah. like half inch, three quarters of an inch. If you dig down with your finger, you'll start feeling the moisture. The closer you get to the bottom of it, the more moisture you maintain. Got gotcha. you. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Super right. good info. All right. All right, guys. <laughs> we have lost half of the, the half of the chat, people. Y'all went straight into about a good half an hour in hydroponics, man. <laughs> yeah. and I know that you make Asian hydroponics, and I know he grows hydroponics sometimes and things like that. But people are like lost, dumbfounded. Like, okay. I'm still, we still, I'm an hour and 26 minutes in, and we still got 18 people in here. That's like crazy. It's so, eight, nine people. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the, I'm gonna be the, the tap dance show. That, so that's they, credit they, to you and uh, Farmer Q. <laughs> the other ones that brought them in. We're going to do intermission here, y'all. <laughs> All right. No. Anyway. So going back, I see a few people in the chat. I, it's a, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, wouldn't, I forget okay. about the chat. Wow. <laughs> you can't say that on live. I, you forgot about the people in the chat. I didn't forget about the people in the chat. I just get into talking about what we're talking about. And I mean, I'm an old Cajun. I forget if if, if if I get off my task, I forget my task. So we were talking about hydroponics. I I stopped one time to say hello to a few people, and then I completely forgot what we were talking about. You know, so I, I wanted to stay on topic. I, I love That's my job. Out. That's my job. I'm sorry. I, 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 pull, I, 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 pull, I pull you out to see it, and Micro Farmer reels you back. That's how we do it. I'm trying to pull you back in. <laughs> good times. Good times. So, so, so let me let – me, He's just trying to bring it back. No pun intended about the pulling out to see about hydroponics. Oh, <laughs> okay. Now, for a lot of people that grow here, you know, I buy a lot of books. So I know I jack up people's names and all that. Just whatever. Some for fun and some I just really jack up, right? So they talk about hydroponics and stuff. This is where I went to the store. So this is my next new friends. They do a lot of hydroponics and stuff like that and nutrients and grow lights. So it's a store that's not that far from me, about nine miles away so i pick up books stuff like this survival medicine so today i was out with my girls and i you know it was over by you know some some spots and you know so i picked up this book today can y'all see it it says grow all you can to three square feet yeah and in the back of it tells you no matter what small space you know get every inch you know grow from balconies raised beds and then inside of it it has like you know a little doc, things like this to show you what you can grow in in small space you know stuff like that in here right then also i think i was talking to q today about we had this discussion about how america have changed the diets of americans um what you call it you said was no nutrients values in these meals and these vegetables that's coming from other countries because they mass producing these um vegetables so there's no real true Nutrient value, you said something like that. Or it reduce. Reduce. Well, just, just, just reduce nutritional value. Yeah. So I told him some nutrients is better than no nutrients because I know our diets in America have become fast food, um, garbage, um, preservatives, steroids, all that kind of stuff is in it. So as I'm talking to people like you know Farming Q and people behind the scenes, I picked up this book. Now it might help some people supplements natural vitamin supplements you know a complete guide of natural vitamins from your foods and it, it, in this book you know 
it has everything about protein, sulfur, and stuff like that. So these book, if you see them, try to pick some up and get some knowledge. So a lot of us don't get lost when you have Cajun Pines and and, and Farmer Q talking about the stuff. And you're going, what? You know, you can put these in your bathroom while you're sitting on the toilet. Clean through it. <laughs> hey, that's the best spot. A lot of people go to the bathroom to get peace and quiet. So why not? You yeah. know? So it's stuff like this. Like, you know, some people get up there and I, I discuss, I buy things. I have chickens. I'm really a chicken person, right? No, not have you. That, have passion. Buy books that you're passionate about. If you're passionate about high, hydroponics and stuff like that, pick up a book. You don't have to sit here and listen to Cajun Hyponics and, and Q. Start getting some information so you don't get lost because they do talk a lot fast when they talking among each other. We get lost because I, I kid you not, half the stuff they said, I just went, went right over my head. Went over my head, but I have made numbers to call them if I have any questions. It, so Hydroponics is actually easy. I watched it for three years when I was in Ohio and I wanted to grow it. And everybody I found was given percentages and you know certain numbers and you, you they tell you all the stuff you needed you need this ppm and you need this you know percentage of this and this percentage of this and it it, it scared me and you know i tell i'm not a smart person I, I i do research and i try to do a lot of things until i met um rob primal cajun you know, um, he had a little greenhouse. We were talking on the Bayou Garden Forum. He's like, dude, come he said, it's easy. Come check it out. And when I went over there, he's like, you see this spoon right here? Like, yeah. He said, you take the master blend, one table, one of these, put a master blend, one of these with a the calcium nitrate, and a half of this for the Epsom salt. A gallon of water. That easy. And it then it clicked. It's like, it, it is. It's so, you know, once you get out of the numbers and, and you get out of all the you know the percentages and, and stuff people talk about when they're talking about hydroponics it's super easy um we were do, i was in a live stream a while back and you know the people like hey well, you know what's hydroponics so i started talking in the side and um somebody's like well yeah but that's that's chemical fertilizer i said yeah it is you know the <clears throat> um organic fertilizer doesn't do well in hydroponics they still haven't come up with something they can produce to make it worthwhile to use and because you know, it's trying to, it's, they're trying to, because they're trying to do something that should never really be right. done in the first place. It like, doesn't need to be done exactly. But that same person that told me, "Oh, organic, you, that's not organic." It's like, yeah, you know, the Miracle Grow. I'm like, Miracle Grow is, you know, the same fertilizer is just a different name brand. That no, it's not. It, like, yes, it is. Go look at your bottle. Go look and see right now. It says nowhere is on it that it's organic. You know. The, bo the, the box they had had the same picture on it that two of the organic um, supplements she had for her for her stuff. And she took it because it had that same picture on it that it was organic. Now, can I ask you a question about this word organic? Because it seems like organic is being pushed around to be bull be BSing people. Unless anything that's come to me, to me, people, I might get screamed at, whatever. Nothing commercialized as by the mass where you could buy tons of it to me none of it's organic unless you do it in your own backyard or your own well, farm stuff. Okay. i don't think i understand the government allowed them to call it organic but i doubt they can make that stuff uh, be able to go through 50 states in america buy tons and tons of low and it's actually organic i mean 100 percent organic but i know the government allows a certain amount of stuff to call it organic but is it yeah. truly organic like somebody on a farm was actually growing organically. I mean, that, I, I can touch that. on I can touch on that simply because I mean I get the, I'm not going to even go into the, the the foxhole on that. So simply put, all of it's organic because it's all stuff that you can eat and poop out. But some of it has less nutritional value and is grown by crappy growers, and some of it has more nutritional value and is grown by growers who know what they're doing. Okay. You know, my, my take on uh, organic and not organic, I, I would love to grow organic, um, growing organic here. Like you say about the, uh, Mr. Home was always saying with the bugs issues and the bug pressures and stuff we have around here, it's basically, we can grow to a point with organic and then the organic pesticides and stuff just doesn't work. Last year we sprayed the pe regular pesticides twice 
through the whole growing season, we grew from basically March through the end of uh, August. And we had to spray twice. We had a weekly regiment, Nemol, BT. We're adding a COPPA fungicide this year and a couple other things. It's all organic. But we're going to reach that point somewhere around June, um, right middle of July, that the, the, the organic stuff doesn't work. But you go in there with two applications of the regular stuff, and, you know, you continue growing. Well, you, know? you better tell your team woodcutters because a lot of them in the South, bro, they're about to get eaten alive, and I'm going to laugh. But but hold on. It's not that we lose all the plants and everything. We just don't – we're we're also getting to the end of the productivity, you know, the, the, the lifespan of the plant by that time. You know, just like y'all, you know, you get to the point – Y'all, y'all normally grow out and then the winter hits before the lifespan of the plant is, is gone. We get to the point where the, the lifespan of the plant is starting to slow down. You're not pr- putting out pr- as much fruit already, but the bug pressure is starting to overwhelm the plant. But, but by, go ahead. Because see, y'all have, I mean, well, not all. See, when I say y'all, I'm not mean every last one of y'all. But a lot of y'all are going to have a lot of issues this year. Trust what I tell y'all. Mark it on this, on this live. <laughs> You're gonna have the 105 degree temperatures in the south this year on a on, on a weekly basis. We don't get that in the northeast, okay. even though we start behind you guys. Hold a lot of times y'all lose a lot of crops through the heat. You're right. But the thing with that is also planting the right fruit or vegetables to be able to do it. My um I've had for issue for years I had issues with cucumbers. They would grow well for about two and a half months, maybe three months, and then the powdery mildew would hit. I found dash of two cucumbers. Dude, it, it, it's ridiculous the amount. They, they don't need fertilization. They make about 90% of the flowers are female, and they don't have to be pollinated. So if your plant grows, you make it amazing. I, you know, I say it in every live stream that we talk about cucumbers. We planted a 30-foot row last year. We had four families eating off of it, and I still sold for $300 in cucumbers. I just that brought is just the cucumber. I just brought a ton of cucumbers right now because I was talking to Q and my neighbors, right? I'm doing their yards. I'm planting. I'm planting all the seed things I got, right? And I'm going, oh, and I don't know if any other gardener have ever done this. That's CB. Other- hey, good, CB. CB. Good, good, good to meet you because I've never actually been in here with you, CB. Good to meet you. As the man you need to talk to about the pyrolite and the, the, the hydroponics. Okay. You okay. can explain it a lot better. Pay attention, Mr. Homer. I don't, I'm not planning to do, hy- if I do hydroponics, it won't be for vegetables. Trust what I tell you. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> Trust what I tell you. It will not be, I'm waiting for Connecticut to pass this law in September, because I'm going to start my own nursery. But it ain't going to be that kind of nursery. So it's going to be for orchids. Yeah. It's going to be gonna for medicinal purposes only. Okay. Medicinal orchids. <laughs> exactly, medicinal orchids. I saw hey, uh, Homestead Aquarius. You're a little right. I'm about to grow a lot of grass. Soon they <laughs> pass that law up here. <laughs> All right. Anyway, going back, somebody was how saying you, something. How you doing, yeah. CB? How you doing, hey, CB? Thing? How you doing? Oh, I, just, I know y'all guys going to get into hydroponics. And a lot of people <laughs> He's like, I got to get mine in before. <laughs> yeah, before y'all get going to hydroponics. Somebody said something. Thank you for stopping by, Voon. Yeah, oh, man. see the chat's going crazy since CB came in here. Hold up, I lost it. Uh, uh, if, I come, if I come in, everybody will leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not leaving. I'm talking about everybody's chatting, chatting, chatting. Now, um, oh man, ah, uh, damn. Oh, man. oh, that was I was gonna say. Anybody here have ever as a gardener have ever done what I've done this year? I have planted so much stuff, right? And I'm planting my neighbor's yard and my neighbor across the street in my own yard, and I'm planting everything under the sun and. Yesterday, when I went to plant their gardens and stuff and prepare their gardens for the growth season, it was one particular vegetable I did not have at all. And I ran out today, and that's what you see in my hand, a low. I had no cucumbers. Have anybody had planted stuff and forgot a vegetable that they wanted to plant and never had the seeds? No. I have done that today. We're going I have to done that this year. Happen. We just decide, oh, we want to plant cucumbers now. We don't forget. Oh, you don't forget. <laughs> oh, wow, we plant cucumbers. <laughs> yeah, because I had everything, because I don't show y'all everything I grow. And I'm like, I got all this, 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 peas, beans, blah, boom. And I realized when I started planting, I did my inventory. I didn't even plant no cucumbers, which was a great thing because cucumbers here 
it says on the back of the package is for May. So May is around the corner. So I wasn't late. I just didn't have the seeds. Gotcha. Gotcha. I had all those seeds. You see me? I sent people seeds, sent seeds. And I realized I didn't even have no cucumber seeds for myself. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man, I got to run out there before people start snatching up the cucumber seeds. So I went out and grabbed me some cucumber seeds. So yeah. I'll be doing that in the next couple of weeks. Now, now y'all can go back to y'all. Well, hop on it. Where you go? He, he got a customer just walked in. He'll be back. Oh, 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 oh he's working. Oh, oh. We got about 20 more minutes that I'm going to have to get my little dude off the bus. But, uh, the, yeah, Mr. I sent some seeds to uh, Mr. Bill at Little White Dory, and he's going to be planting Dasher 2s also up there. Um, not far from you, Mr. Homer. So oh, okay. See how they work. I could send you some next year. Yeah. But, you, but you're right, though, Cajun. We, we, we really don't forget because what happens is even if we do forget, we're thinking about it so much that if we got the space, we'll plant it right on time because we're always trying to be early. We're always trying to be early with some seeds. Come on now. That's a gardener for you. I'm actually lucky that I was still building uh, the raised beds because when that Arctic front come through, I would normally be planted tomatoes and cucumbers in the ground almost four weeks whenever we hit that, that Arctic front. I always push it real early. And my thing, especially with cucumber seeds, it's like, man, you know, 200 cucumber seeds is what, $4? I, I eat more than I, I drink that, you know, if I stop at the gas station, I'll drink more than that in a, in a drink, you know, so putting out those seeds early, if I lose a few seeds or if they make it, I'm early. If they don't, I replant, you know, it's not a big deal. But Mr. CB, what did I mess up whenever I was talking about the um, the hydroponics? I was going through it quick. I know you were listening um, with the recirculating system. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was the question? The, did I mess anything up when I, we were to, um, speaking earlier about the hydroponics, the recirculating, um, about how the, the the PPMs and everything works with the pyrolite? Did, did I mess anything up or did you catch that when we were talking? about? I, it? I caught part of it. I typed in there. Be right back. I had to help somebody. But anyway, uh, no, you, you just about dead on. You just can't beat the pyrolite. Another reason why I use the temple on top of my buckets uh, is to keep the moisture inside. So, you know, you're, it, it keeps everything intact and, and wet. It don't dry out. The only right. thing that I did catch about you was talking about on your big tank, because every 30 days I, you know, I changed mine out, as you were saying. But on the huge tank like you got, I, I could see a lot of buildup of one or the other right. staying in the tank because it's, it's not actually using that volume, that, that amount that you're pumping. That makes sense? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, it's used, It could be using a lot more water and leaving the nutrients sitting in the, uh, in the solution every time we add the... Uh, yes, Mr. I, CB, Mr. CB I, does a different setup than what I have because... He, he's able to to use it. He actually has a, a a fill tank with water in it that does your tank doesn't have uh, the hydroponics in it, right? The solution. A fresh water top off tank. Fresh water top off tank. Correct. Do y'all use potassium silicate for bug deterrence at some to some degree? No, I haven't tried. It, all I've used up to this point is the master blend formula. Um, I have videos out shared. I did share a few of my secrets that I did state in that video. If Rob is listening still out there not mowing grass, uh, I put out one video that I plainly stated I would not mention again because, I mean, you know, I, I tell my secrets out there and people just run with it and put it on their channel and get thousands of views and my little channel sits over getting a couple hundred views, you know, but, and they're, and they're using my ideas and, and what they've learned from me. And, and me and Q just talked about that, people doing that. And that's why when you hear my videos, if you follow me, I will tell you where I got my information from. I don't go and listen to you guys and go back and act like I'm the one thought of that. So you hear my videos, I'll say I got that from Cajun, from a Q or somebody that told wow. me will grow. I, I give the, the 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 respect to letting you know where I got the information from. You always hear me give credit to anybody. Mm -hmm. Just like the the tribute that I'm doing right now for Mr. Wayne that we lost up there at Spring Hill. Danny was talking about him a while ago with them grow slabs. 
Grove slabs work absolutely awesome. Now they really do, but it is a drain to waste system and you are going to spend five times the cost of your nutrients than what we are with our Dutch bags because yeah. the it's, it's drained to waste is gone. And that's why I'm not sitting here like, oh, because I'll, I'll be the first to tell you, I've never grown in a 100 percent Dutch bucket situation like that. But I will say that I've grown in a coconut in a coconut choir situation, but I was not the person to be over here like, oh, like because, you know, some people get in their feelings about the way that they do things. <laughs> and then they'll be like, they'll be like, oh, um, like I've done this for so many years and this is how I do it. And this is my identity. So if this person says I do it this way, then. I'm just having a, a I cannot compute moment. You know what I mean? Like people, it happens. And 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 my thing is, I look at the perlite mm -hmm. situation. And I'm like, man, that must save a lot of money with nutrients because the plants are only going to eat what they want to eat. So if you can if you can kind of play that spoon feeding angle a little bit, you're going to get a lot better with the drain so, away. From this. Now you just hit a key right there. Uh, stepping back to what Danny was just asking me. Yeah. I do it on my reservoirs a gallon per bucket. Okay. The reason why I do that is I absolutely want to make sure that my tank is just about emptied on every run. So it's absolutely sucking everything from that tank or, you know, near about within four or five gallons worth anyway. You're talking about inches before cavitation, basically. Yeah, just I want to make sure that that is circling. Danny's got that humongous tank where it is not absolutely recycling okay. that big tank. It, on each run, um, it, it, re, it, it moves the fluid 100. percent It's a 2,500 it, it gallon, but it, it it doesn't pull it all. That's, away. A, that, that's the key right there, Danny. He just hit a key right there. Yeah, he is using a humongous pump. He is absolutely cavitating that doggone tank with that pump moving it, even though it may not suck it all. It, it doesn't is. pull it all the way down. So yeah. that's why. So that's why. Yeah. So that's why he'd be more inclined to make sure that he doesn't let that get low at all, because that cavitation of that magnitude is just not good, right? Well, no. What Mr. CB is trying to say, besides the cavitation, is you you want to you, you want your tank to transfer every time you pump out. You want to move all the fluid you have in your tank out to all the buckets. You want it to circulate completely. You don't want to like with without my tank, running the pump dry. Okay. You, you don't want it to pump dry, but you want to make sure all the fluid in that tank was taken and pushed from the tank out to the buckets and comes back. You know, you, you might not, he pulls it all the way down. Um, my tank, because I have such a big pump, actually circulates it all the way around. I have a 2,500 gallon of tank out an hour. Um, it, I'm sorry, I got a 2,500 gallon pump an hour. It moves 125 gallons an hour. I'm gonna get it out right one of these times. But I have a 180 gallon tank. If I was using two 600 gallon an hour pumps like I used to use, I wouldn't be able to recirculate all the fluid in that tank. So, if let, let's let me kind of say it like this: if your top is holding a little bit more of the nutrients, you know, if everything doesn't blend out together, if you recirculate the whole tank, the whole tank is pushed out everywhere, kind of. And, and if you look at my tank, my pump, if my tank is like this right here, my pump is over here sucking up. My return line is over here. Right. Yeah. So it has to return over here and pull back to the pump. Does that make sense? It makes sense. So in the same in the same instance, a lot of people just have a pump bearing and the, the doggone return line sitting right on top of it. Well, now you're as fast as stuff is pumping into your tank draining back you're sucking it right into pump so you want to actually like have, have like a buffering space in between basically i want that tank to cut i want it all the way yeah. down until it's just about where the pump has just got enough to keep it running without running dry got you so oh. could you could you on that same token do like a flood and drain system and get the same results or would it be different with per well, now, any uh, your flood flood to drain the same as drained waste that's well that's that's what I, is 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 um, well i'm asking because i know somebody who does a flood and drain system where they flood it and they return it back to their reservoir and i'm like is is that is that that's not is that drained to waste i mean i'm i'm, I'm asking no uh, no if they're, if they're bringing it back to their tank then no that's that's recycling they're, they're okay and, 
And at it's that point, it's the same. Right. Drain the waste, like, gone. It is no, there's no yeah. recycling. And, I, and that was my, that was my bad on saying drain the waste. I meant drain. I meant like flooding. I mean like flooding. I don't know, flood and recirculate. Because I guess that's what it would be considered at that point. And, you know, it's a flood and drain because what it is is a. Uh, the water will climb up so high in the bucket or the tank or the platform it's in okay. and then it gets it, it actually makes a vacuum and pulls it all the way back down yeah and that's what I, that's what my friend has yeah and, and most of the time it's a continually running system that it, it'll run for longer periods of time than what we do with the dutch buckets the dutch buckets is uh, you know i think on um mr cb runs his 15 minutes a turn yeah he yeah he floods his for 40 minutes and I, I've been running mine for 30 minutes. Well, just now, mine's been running for, you know, I, I spoke of this because of the new timers that I had when I, two years ago when I got that other timer, it's 30 minutes on it is the minimum. So my tomato house has been running at 30 minutes per run. I thought it was 15. Sorry. I uh, used to always be 15 until the mechanical timers quit on me and I changed over and got them sealed. You right. seen that new one, that new one that I showed in the new greenhouse? Well, I got that same one that I showed on to main house number one, uh, where it's sealed in, and they're, they're 30 minutes. So, so, how many times a day do you run that at that time frame? Three times, okay. Every, every six hours like, during the day, 6 a.m., 12 o'clock, and then 6 p.m. And, and you know, this is why I get so like just nerd out so bad when we talk about hydroponics because there's so many different ways to run this i mean you could literally have like a you can have like your drip in like zero so you can drip it and have your dripping time just to the point where you're not wasting anything from a weight from like a drain away standpoint you're hit but you have your your nutrient salt so you have your nutrient set to exactly the right level to where you're not like particularly burning the plants or anything like that but like that takes like super good balancing and at that point you have to know the plants that you're growing right well, like, you know, like Danny was talking about, they make systems out there that they got injectors that it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, you got a tank of water and then you got three, your three nutrients sitting in separate injectors. They never touch each other until they hit the main line to go feed. Okay. One, one second, guys. Because uh, I know they're getting caught up in the, uh, the hydroponic. Uh, I believe Little White Dory, he was saying something about because he, I think he's in Long Island, like across the water from me. Right. How he say he posted. Maybe somebody was talking about somehow he deals with the cold weather, and he made a couple of comments. But I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not familiar what was going on. So, um, Little White Dory was talking about something about cold weather or something. Yeah, he, uh, he he starts a lot of plants, and he has some raised beds, and he's been posting. Um, he, he has some trailers he makes some small greenhouses with to be able to keep them um i, I didn't get to watch the video yet oh okay uh he, he did um in the title of the video the plants had some uh leaf issues but they were still growing oh because y'all guys grow in grow houses y'all grow y'all grow in greenhouses that's what you're trying to get to you you're trying to get your attention or something about how y'all deal with the cold i, I didn't see that i didn't see it either I know you didn't see that's so why I was trying to bring attention. He said, I give up. He was trying, I think, get your attention to speak how y'all deal with the cold. He said he dropped a video of how you well, deal said, with the he said cold. He's up flowers today. Oh, okay. So, sorry, I'm just, you know, I mean, it's not my live, but uh, Lulu oh, White Dory, maybe he'll look back and he'll get back to you. Maybe they'll get back to you about the question, um, Lulu White Dory. I don't want nobody to feel that they missed, they just wasn't paying you no attention. All right. I'm, thank you. Because I, I I don't want to say I'm I'm, I'm ignoring them again. It, it didn't come out right last time. I just get caught up in the conversation. Yeah. And okay. you know, I think uh, another point another point could be brought up too. And you know, I don't know. Some people just don't do email as much. But for me, like when people have questions sometimes, and we're having like a discussion, and we're trying to like get information out there like that, and we're trying to just kind of talk or whatever. Sometimes if you just shoot a little email, it like. You'll, you'll be surprised at how fast somebody responds to you. Like, I know for me, like, when people shoot me emails, I'll respond within, like, two to four hours. Like, I'm talking, usually be within 30 minutes, but, like, I'm just giving you a window. But, like, it's easier for people to, because sometimes when people are trying to, it's because this is a show. Like, this live is a show right now. You know what I mean? We're we're talking amongst each other, and we're hanging out, yes, but we're, we're sharing really good information. So we want to also be able to help those people who have questions, too. My issue whenever I, someone sends me an email is putting it, I, I'll read it 
you know, to where I can understand it, but it doesn't always come across that way. And Mr. Bill from Little White Door would tell you, I call it speaking Cajun. You know, it just, <laughs> when I read it, it sounds right. It just doesn't come out right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, and, you know, he will laugh. He's like, well, uh, Peanut Peppers was on a live a while back. And he's like, well, y'all speak Cajun. It's like, it, it's not that easy just to speak Cajun. You know, it just, it's, so, it's so. slangs and terms and stuff. I got, I got to say real so quick. Basic, let, me say, let me say this real quick. And it's one thing. Cajun, you got like a good time smile, bro. Whenever you smile and get to like smirking and stuff, I just start laughing and smiling because I'm just like, man, this dude would be fun to be around, man. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I do. I like, I like visiting. I yeah. love talking gardening. Um, you know, it's so. It's, if y'all watch Microfarm, I try to take these guys' advice and watch them and watch what they do with that hydroponic stuff, and I try to do like us, the groundkeepers. I grow in dirt. These are not groundkeepers. So what I try to do, my little self, is ask these guys, how would that work in the groundkeepers method? You know, okay. these like CB, CB gardening, and, and, I mean, greenhouse garden. See, they hydroponic guys. A lot of these guys are doing hydroponic uh, stuff like uh, that. Mr. CB, Mr. CB actually grows in raised bales, uh, straw bales. Raised that is bales. correct. Yeah. Uh, see, I said dirt keepers. I didn't say straw bales. I said dirt <laughs> keepers. <laughs> but it, it, if you watch, if you watch his stuff, the, the hydroponic fertilizer. You don't watch my videos. I try. <laughs> you know, I try to get to everybody. Like I said, I, I mean, it's so many of us. I can't say I watch 10, 12 of y'all videos, but I try to get around, you know. And like I said, besides, if I don't get around and I'll sit and I, I, I do my research, I'm not buying these $25 books just to be looking good and be like a professor. I'm learning from you guys and stuff that I... If I can't reach you guys, I'm reading up stuff because I want to sound just like you guys one day. It, it it's not really sounding off, you know. It's just it, it's repetitive for me. It's repetitive, mm -hmm. you know. And Mr. CB could tell you I talk to him often, and my you memory, stop. I just, <laughs> dude, honestly, the last I, answer, I do need to ask the farmer cues to finish off on the drain to waste and drain to flood. Okay. Okay, that's two different that's two different things though yeah. so yeah it's very confusing when people talk about hydroponics because they call things the wrong thing and you think if they say drain to waste then you're thinking okay you know it's drained to us we know what that is but to yeah. them they don't realize that they're recycling it back you know yeah it's called different it is not drained and you know waste. and that's why i try to use my words carefully too because i'm a beginner in hydroponics let me just say that right now like I know enough to have a conversation about it, but I'm a beginner and I want to learn from you guys. That's why, that's why like I'm trying to tread so carefully about my terminology. Cause I could just sit here and just say whatever's on my mind and y'all could probably get it through context clues, but we have people listening to us. So I want to make sure that I'm clear about what I'm saying. Yeah. But when, when, when you're talking, it also helps other people. They might have the same idea and we might be able to, you know, point that out then you know it, it just like the dwc the drain of waste or the uh i'm sorry not the dwc drain to waste the dwc is a completely deep water culture is a di different system altogether and the flood to drain you know by talking about it you, you've also put out a good point that mr cb was able to you know not only tell you the difference but the people listening in, in the on the side he, you know now they they could possibly understand the difference you know um terminology is, is fluid you know uh different people some people call their uh, where they set their buckets on shelves you know some people call everything you know different areas different people call it different things and it all means the same thing so by asking questions you know even though it's not you don't feel like it's the right question or you don't quite know the terminology the terminology might help you know what you think it is someone else might think it is or it might actually be you know, and it's able to help everyone that's listening. Okay. So on that note, y'all, right? Now, since Cold State Aquarius is talking about growing a lot of grass, so if anybody's trying to grow grass in their backyard, the key to have some great grass that you're going to see me do in the future is that you take a five-gallon bucket, you put your grass seeds in it, and you let them grass seeds stay in water for four days. Four days. <laughs> And then you plant your seeds and you get a good germ. You'll get at least 97% germination on Kentucky grass or any blue grass or crab grass, whatever you want. 
So, soaking, seeds <laughs> soaking seeds don't work. We talked about that at the beginning of the live stream. No, soaking. <laughs> just don't put bleach. Don't put bleach on those grass seeds. Just put, just put regular rainwater. Or just put it. Just soak your grass seeds in water before you waste a bunch of seeds that you overseed. So if you have these dry patches or whatever you're trying to do. Soak your seeds for four days in a five-gallon bucket. Just put you about three gallon, three pounds of grass seed, whatever grass seed you're growing, and let it sit in the water bucket for about three days. And then you drain it, and then you, you, you broadcast your um, seeds, and hopefully it'll germinate within like seven, eight days. You should have germination. If because, it, take, if it yeah, takes four days in water, I guarantee you 15 minutes in uh, bleach, you'll be growing grass the next yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> Do you throw away your floaters? Oh, he throw now nah, you just oh. give them to the birds. The floaters that go to the birds. I, when I soak seeds, I plant them all. If I put them in the Clorox, even though they float, I, I plant them all. It's because, funny you say that though, because like I've had floaters that I've had complete seed crops of straight floaters, and then they all germinate. But then if if most of them sink, and then you have floaters in that batch, those floaters won't germinate. I found it's weird. It's like little. It's like little weird intricacies within it. Is it different types of grass? You know, that's what you're talking about, or is it just different seeds? Oh, I'm just talking about different seeds at this point. Together. Yeah, I was going to ask that question. Is the difference between grass seed and the vegetable seed? Mm, that's yeah. So, so CBs, were you trying to, were you trying to, like, were you trying to say that there was a difference too, though? Like, or are you just asking too? Say, uh, what? Were you saying that, like, with grass, like, there is a difference with the floaters? Because I'm, I'm asking, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, I, yeah, I'm trying to find I, I hate mowing grass, and, and I try to cover up as much of it with weed guard as I can, you know. <laughs> so, I, I can't help you on no grass, though. I, I just planted a whole cover crop in my backyard. I was just like, forget it. I just threw cover crop seed in my backyard. The original name of my channel was Growing Grass when Mr. CB met me because I was right. working so much. I thought I'm, he was growing weed. Everybody, <laughs> everybody did. Where's the weed? I'm like, no, I grow grass. I can't grow tomatoes and stuff. I'm still learning. I just grow grass. I leave. I go to work. I come back. The grass is nine feet tall. You know, it's <laughs> the bad part about Louisiana. We can grow year round, but the grass grows year round. So y'all got like side farms out the wazoo out there, huh? Not really. The uh, the acreage that we'd be able to have the uh, sod farms is pretty much in sugarcane and crawfish. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. It's there, there's more money. What's, in up, it. Uncle? What's up, Irving Grandpa Prepper? Um, Homestead Aquarius is asking a question for y'all. Go, I know you're about to go pick up your son off the chair. I mean, off the bus. He's asking, What are some of the main problems with hydroponic disease and pests and such? Uh, do you want to get that, Mr. CB? My, my greenhouses are sealed, so I don't have a lot of pest problem in mine, except for. You know, the pepper house, you know, the, the stupid aphids is the thing that I fight with but as far as pest was. Um, it, it, the, the main thing you got to worry about in the greenhouse is keeping the damp, all the wetness off of your plants because um, it'll cause mold and wilt. And circulation, air circulation is key in a greenhouse. Okay, so for occasional hydroponics, okay, this guy, I maybe do it simple so maybe people understand what you just said. What are the pros and cons of running a hydroponic system? Grows quick, grows monster plants. Yeah, I, that's I'll the grow pro. Plants that's three the times pro. Faster than what yours will. So yeah. that's the pro. In fact, in fact, if you look at what I got in greenhouse number one right now, them little old seedlings wasn't were that big, and the ones that you see Renee put out in the straw bales, you know, they're that doggone big. Well, my little old dinky seedlings is, I throw into them Dutch buckets is now done called up with hers, and I'll, I'll have tomatoes in the greenhouse before she will outside. Yeah, I, uh, um, in two yeah, weeks, yeah. What's, the, what's the cons? That's the pros. What's okay. the cons? The cons is you actually have the ideal breeding grounds. If if your greenhouse isn't sealed like mine, aren't sealed yet, you have the ideal breeding grounds for every possible pest, every possible disease, because you know, you, you you can't have too much moisture in there. You can't overheat during the winter times. It's going to be warm, you know. So the it's drought, drought. You know, growing in a greenhouse is it's everybody thinks I want to grow in a greenhouse because it's easier. It it is easier to a point, but it's ideal for everything that you have outside. Is the ideal growing area for it if you don't keep it out. Now. You got to watch your drought, though. Drought. Let me let me yeah. put that in there. The drought. 
Okay. You have a bad drought outside. Animals are coming to your hydroponics. Why? They know the moisture. The moisture is there, and they're coming to get a drink. Or yeah. eat your, you know, they want that moisture. So drought, drought areas are. Yeah, good. bugs, bugs in their in their coats. They love that, that that exoskeleton. They they don't like to be in water, obviously, but they like to be in that nice, humid. It makes them feel all cozy right. and snug. <laughs> now that's why I might did wrong because. The other day it was 74 degrees up here, right? But then that little greenhouse I built, um, Danny, yeah. it had it was 104 in that little six by six greenhouse I made with the four mil plastic. Yeah. When I went, the reading was it was 74 degrees outside, and I don't have a fan because it's a makeshift greenhouse. It's some traction I put together, right? It was 104, so I had to keep the flap open. With the flap open without a fan, it went down to like 98 degrees. Now, what is the ideal chip temperature for a greenhouse? The ideal. During the summer, they're going to get 110, 120 degrees, even with your fans and all. Fans and Air shit. circulation. I cannot preach that enough. Even though you're moving that hot air, it is circulating. You know, stale air will harm your plants in a heartbeat. So even though it might be 104, 105, whatever, you just want the air to be moving. Absolutely. Okay. It's called air exchange. Okay, now it, it, mine's not completely sealed up because I have screened in windows. Okay, mm -hmm. that's it's still sealed to me. So again, we're talking something that could confuse somebody when saying sealed, they're thinking I'm completely sealed off. Now I got two foot pedestal all the way around the bottom that's screened in, and I got a huge wind in the back that is screened in. Mm -hmm. All right, so air circulation, you want to exchange that air. You want, I got one fan over here pushing this way and another fan pushing that way. So it's pulling it in and pushing it out the other end. You are exchanging the, even though it's hot, you're exchanging that air. It makes a huge difference. So, quick question about the grass though. Like, so Andel said, she was saying, once the grass seeds are wet, how do you spread them? Oh no! You drain them out. You drain it out. You use a uh, uh, a screen. Like if you go to Home Depot, you get you a, a, a which you want to call a window screen piece, a piece of wind screen. Put you a two by four staple it, and you're just gonna drain the seeds onto that mesh. That mesh. You could probably get a cheesecloth, whatever you want to use. But then you put it in that hand spreader. You don't put in that one you push. Put in the hand spreader because you you got you know it, it's, it's a little better that hand one, the handheld one, seed spreader. But the, the seed is not going to be actually so wet like a piece of bread. It's not going. That's not. That's not. I know some people's thinking that that you the seed. You can let it dry. You, you can let your seed uh, dry up a little bit before you put it in the spreader. Yeah. Yeah. And Mr. Robert did make a good point. The stuff mentioned for the greenhouses is for greenhouses. It's not just related to hydroponics. You know, if you have a greenhouse, you're going to have the same issues mm -hmm. whether you're growing in the dirt or you're growing in buckets. With the with the bug pressure, you know, and the the, the humidity inside, yeah. and everything with it, you know, that, that's a great point that we didn't mention because we've been talking so much about the hydroponics. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, a greenhouse is a greenhouse. It doesn't matter how you're growing. Your humidity levels might be a little bit higher with the uh, hydroponics because you do have more water based inside of it than you would in a raised bed system. But then, depending on how often you water your raised beds, exactly. You know, it, it, that thing gonna be hot. Yeah. Um, okay, Jason, Danny, are you watching your time? It's four oh two here. Yeah, I was about to say because you got to pick I've up your. Got, you got I've got uh, eight more minutes. Okay. okay. Oh, I was I was looking at the time. I forgot I started about ten minutes early. My alarm. Oh, she's going out. to get him. I'll say her go out the door. <laughs> she's gonna play with the chicken. She's not gonna get her brother. And if oh. he gets here and I don't get him off the bus, oh, it's gonna be the end of the world. Yeah, I'm going to hear the end of it. <laughs> He's going to be so mad. He's going to walk in here. So before you get off, I just want to say, Danny, I'm glad you're home. And you're safe. I know I heard about the incident, but I'm glad you're home. You made home today on shore today. So glad you came on live. Let us know that you're well and, you know, well and good. So thank you so much for um, having a live and having me join you live today. Thank you for stopping. Whatever you said last night about the, um, you made that comment about, you know, the people about the, the, um, the seeds, the okra seeds, and the, the Clorox is like heck yeah. Let's do a let's do a live stream on it. You know, I did, I've been <clears throat> the last three months, almost four months between work and and working home, has just been ridiculous. You know, Mr. Like Mr. CB said, I really haven't been able to even talk to him hardly. 
with mm-hmm. them out. Um, we actually had the, the government out at work this week and doing an inspection. And this was like a really good wind down for me coming in from that. Um, you know, it's well, how about Sunday. I've, I've never done a lie. I've joined in on, on lies, but I've never done one. I've been thinking about trying to do one. We got some really nasty weather Saturday, Saturday night, but if it's decent Sunday and you're free, Danny, uh, maybe I can get with you and, and I'll take up the laptop and wire out to one of the greenhouses. I need to plan up the pepper house and that'd be a good time to do a live and question and answer on something like that. If, if you're willing to do that. Heck yeah. Yeah. Um, tomorrow night, uh, tomorrow night, Saturday night, uh, broke farmer and myself will be doing a live stream on here. He doesn't like, uh, he says he, him and stream yard have issues. So, um, we'll be doing it, talking about the tomato plants. He had some questions just like, you know, yourself, Mr. Homer about the, uh, soaking wanted to talk about it more. He had some uh, questions about the, pr- why I pruned the way I did in the greenhouse. So I told him it'd be a great time. We get to visit a little bit more talking about it on a live stream. What time is that? Um, five o'clock. Uh, I'm gonna have to go back and look. I'm pretty sure it's five o'clock my time, six o'clock. Your time. Okay. Yeah. So we'll be we'll be doing that. Well, we're dealing with a freeze. We had to cover everything last night. We got 29 is frost, and this morning now tonight it's gonna be the same thing. So we got to recover everything again. We'll probably lose a bunch of stuff outside. But propane heaters working great in greenhouse. I ain't worried about them. But. I got three of them. One for each greenhouse. Me. I hear you, Bo. Got <laughs> you on the 18 wheel right now. Um, I know he said he's going to probably go live later on tonight. So look out for his notification. He's going to well, go live. Hey, I'm not going live tonight. I'm not. So don't look for it. <laughs> oh, you're not? <laughs> I'm not. I was going to go live, but like oh. I, I decided I was going to come and hang out with Cajun for his live. <clears throat> oh, okay. Okay. So, all right. So, so it's room for somebody to go live tonight now. <laughs> I mean, well, I thought I'll, I was probably, gonna... I'll probably end up going live tomorrow night or something because. Oh, okay. Well, if I can get the thing set up in the pepper house where I can be planting up the peppers and all and have Danny and a couple of people around or whatever to be able to. Let you, if you ever invite me. If you yeah, ever invite me. That screen being way over there. So when Definitely, people Mr. Have CB, them. have one of the dirt keepers there, bro. <laughs> CB, have a dirt keeper there. Y'all be on that hydroponics and cocoa cores. And sh- have a dirt keeper there. That's what I'm here for, a dirt keeper. What wow. a deep. Got him. It's like the world today. You got to have a balance. You got to have a dirt keeper, a hydroponics, aquaponic. What do you call aquaponics? <laughs> hook, up, hook up with a son. See, that's that's, that's, my, home, that's my home micro farmer. I'm, I'm soil I'm soil at home. I'm just, I'm trying to venture outside of home and trying to learn some more things. The prodigal right. son has, will return one day. No, I'm just like, <laughs> well, the biggest thing, Danny's got to show me how to do all this stream yard junk, you know, because I've never done a live and all I know if my poor internet at the house will work. I've got a big uh, walking 12 meg at uh, house, so. It, it, it might have issues. We, we can go in and set it up uh, and do a pre-test with it to see how it works. But the biggest issue with it is if you're running it from Urian, the, um, it's gonna pull a lot more bandwidth. Like from where you're at right now, sitting over there, it's well, hell, I'm at work, but I got I got 200 meg here. Right, but that's what I'm saying. But you're, it's sending the signal to mine, and then my internet is rebroadcasting it. Um, so it may not work. Yeah, let's do a test if you yeah. get time. The, you get time sometime Sunday. I'll, I'll give you a holler tonight after a baseball practice. We got to go to a t-ball practice. <laughs> Aquarius, yo, know, I tell you. I got your guys hostage. I got your your, your woodcuckers hostage. I got two frogs hostage, bro. I don't know what makes more fertilizer, Mr. Homer. Them frogs are that mouth. They ain't nothing <laughs> that come out of there. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm gonna let y'all go. Yeah, I know you I'm gonna have to head out of here. Man. Uh so, drops drops uh family garden. Thank you for stopping by it. I I I was not neglecting very sorry. Chris is uh clever craft. Thank y'all. Everybody else is still in here, you know, Mr. CV, former Q, Mr. Homer, thank y'all for coming up. This was yeah. so enjoyable. Had a great time, you know, uh, and I'll, I'll get with you tonight, probably around 7 o'clock, Mr. CV. I'll give you a holla. So, everyone, Canadian Proud Outdoors, Mr. Dan, everybody, thank y'all. South Louisiana, boy, you got to love it. Y'all grow that. Later. Grow that. Yeah. <laughs> get her done. Later. Later.